Good evening, everyone. This is not Pentaforce, but this is Groundhog's Day, so it is so much better because you get Zelda after Zelda after Zelda. After Zelda, after Zelda, after Zelda. Indeed. This is the finals of the Pride of Punxsutawney, uh, something like that anyway, uh, between Fred Coughlin and Theerwolf. Uh, who both knocked me out last week. Uh, this is a very, very interesting flag set. I am joined here tonight by none other than Redbird Grad. How are you doing? Good, man. I'm going to try to hold you back since you're going to be out for blood here. Revenge against these guys that knocked you out of this. Um, no, I'm doing great, man. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm not too bad. So this flag set has some pretty interesting rules involved with it. Uh, we haven't been able to restream any of these thus far, so we're just going to get the finals, but man, it's going to be a treat. If you've ever played in one of the Groundhog's Day races, you kind of know what's going to happen here. These players have up to 45 minutes to complete the game before they must reset. Now, they can reset at any point before that. They can reset as many times as they want. Uh, so basically, if you've watched the Routers Relish on Sunday, it's kind of like a one-day version of that, uh, where you just kind of route out and figure out where everything's at, and you have to finish the game in one session in under 45 minutes. Yeah, and then it's the first to find the little hedgehog thing wins, right? you got to hold them up over your head. Sounds right to me. I think that's what we're playing for. Uh, another really interesting part of this that'll, that'll make it fun is that uh, the underworld is random. And we do not have dungeon headers, so we're going to be shooting in the dark for a little bit, trying to figure out what's going on, but hopefully we'll get it figured out quickly. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. I mean, I played in this. Um, I got eliminated pretty early on just because of the uh, whole underworld thing and not knowing what was going on. My memory's terrible, so I, this was not a good flag set for me, but this is a lot of fun to play in, a lot of fun to watch, so uh, off we go, man. Yeah, the famous 3 forfeit week. Uh, that was a bit rough, as we see super ropes on the overworld. Yeah, that was one week that we uh, we all found and knew what to do, but we just didn't want to do it again because our 45-minute window came up and we're like, nope, see you later. And immediately we do run into a dungeon. Uh, key there for Fred, but no way to progress otherwise, so not really going to help us out as far as figuring out what this could be or could not be. Yeah, the unique thing about this, like you said, is that, okay, these guys are going to find keys, they're going to find items and stuff like that, and a lot of times you're trying to do things as fast as possible to get through a regular rando seed. Well, now not only do they have to do that, but they have to mark exactly where they found things, what order they found things in, if they were key blocked before they found them, and different things like that so that the next day, the next time they start this through, they can do this efficiently and, um, okay, now I know where the wand is, or now I know where the, the white sword is, but all of a sudden if you got two keys between you and it, you can't get there, and your your uh, your note taking skills are on display here. Yeah, it, it's it's one of those things that really. While you know we were talking about routers relish, uh, you get a week to prep for that. This you have forty five minutes per run to write down the right things and find the order in which to do stuff. Um, and last time I just couldn't find the bow, but at the times for this other than that one week that was just absolutely dreadful uh have been pretty good i mean they've been in below an hour and a half which is pretty impressive all things considered and just speaks to the skill level that's involved between uh the runners that we had and the two runners that we have tonight yeah it's kind of cool right because you know what's the strategy here do you go 20 minutes until you know you know kind of a lot of the overworld and a couple key things and then say okay i think now i have enough info that i can beat the game in 45 or do you use the entire 45 get as much as you can but then you might be starting behind somebody but you have more info than the other person to be able to, to finish on day two. So there's a lot of strategy on when this first reset's going to be. So that's going to be the first important thing to look for. Yeah, it's definitely, it's a different, it's a, it's a dynamic, right? And everybody plays differently. Um, I, I always, it really depends on what I find. If I find an early sword and I'm able to find some dungeons and some important things, I'll generally reset about 20, 25 minutes and then, you know, go for the, go for the, the home run. But, um, there have been a couple of times where you just don't find anything. You almost full clear the overworld. Uh, and this is a mixed overworld. So there's the possibility that things are recorder and power bracelet blocked. Um, and when you just can't find things, you really have to take the time to do it because, you know, you're going to spend all this time in the next day with only a 52 large secret, mind you, trying to figure out where the heck stuff's at. And so you're still just wasting time. Yeah. Like you said, it's just, it's such a cool dynamic. And this is such a great idea for a flag set that, uh, I'm glad we're able to stream this finals and so everybody can see it because it's, it's just it's a very fun 
um, strategy on a different take on a regular rando scene. Yeah, I, th I think as far as like difficulty of Groundhog's Days that we've had, this is probably pretty far up there. Again, the the random underworld without a header makes it really difficult because um, you don't know what you're walking into. As we do see Fred find another dungeon. Um, so, I mean, I would encourage people to try these races on their own with perhaps a little bit easier, easier flag set, but it is a whole lot of fun for sure. Yeah, definitely. If you ever are interested, we always do these annually at Groundhog, Ground, Groundhog's Day. On that day, we'll do these. Um, and there's probably a couple leading up to it or whatever, but on Groundhog's Day, we're sure to do one of these. So the next time that comes around, um, if you want to hop on this and, and learn Rando and learn what they're doing and, and try these, um, we'll definitely have an annual race. And that's kind of where this flag set came about. Yeah, Liquid Husband bringing up another fantastic point that I forgot to mention. This is six Triforces only, so they don't have to find the full eight, which again just kind of brings about that craziness of trying to figure out, well, which direction do I want to go? Uh, and, and, you know, what do I want to find? Where am I going to dig to find the stuff that I need? Yeah, and, and the chat bringing up more things, you know, about the flag set, there's uniqueness to it because it is shapes. It's not vanilla one like you're um, used to seeing in the Pentaforce tourney that, you know, has been going on the past five weeks. This is shapes. So if they find a very difficult shape or a, a, a Triforce that's really buried because you have that six Triforce requirement, that's one that they can kind of mark off and say, okay, I know where it is, but I'm not doing that unless I really, really have to. Well, and, and the other thing is that with shapes, at, at least for me, right? It's really difficult for me to map shapes, especially when you've got this time crunch. If you're doing first or second quest, you can at least remember a vague idea of, okay, or it's in this part of the dungeon. Well, with shapes, it's really hard to do that because it's not something that you have ingrained in your brain. So we'll see how these guys end up playing this out. Yeah, definitely. For people that may be new also, you may be thinking, okay, a lot of times I see these randos done in, you know, one hour, 110, 50 minutes, that type of thing. How in the world, even if you know everything, how can you get done in 45 minutes or less? Well, if you think about it, look at all this time they're spending right now just looking for the wood sword. On day two after their reset, their wood sword's going to be within 30 seconds unless they have a wand that's quicker or something like that. So all that info you gain is all that time that you're going to detract from the next day because you have that info up front. So that's why you can get these done in 45 minutes. A lot of this overworld exploration does not need to be done after this initial time. Yeah, and that's, I think, also why you're saying, you know, we're six minutes in and they're still checking open caves, but there's not a huge push to find the Armos item, to find the wood sword, because it's a lot of what's going on is you have to find the dungeons. You got to find level nine anyway. So the, the first day is a lot about exploration. I don't know that I've ever seen anyone finish one of these in the first day. Uh, some people have been really, really close, but it's super hard because you have to basically just have the randomizer run of your life and everything has to just fall into place. Yeah, I think if you had, you know, regular first quest shaped dungeons, you would see people maybe go for it. But because you have find the bomb holes and those types of things, which are, you know, they're legit things that you're going to have to encounter when you have shapes, um, deal with it or not. It's just one of those things to where, okay, 45 is probably not realistic. Don't chance it because if I get to 43, 44 and I'm in level nine and I have to reset, I am way behind the rest of the field. Yes, indeed. And we do see Fred digging a dungeon. Uh, we will not know unless they check their Triforce, um, you know, setups in the menu which uh i would imagine that they would if they find an item or even if they don't because if you get the triforce out of one or eight you want to know that so that way you can go back in because you know that there are two items there yeah fred's kind of digging this one hoping there's a quick triforce or a diamond staircase something like that you can pop into unfortunately he's seen you know a couple different places where it's push blocked and enemy blocked so he's not gonna be able to say, here's a diamond though so we'll see also second quest enemies much fun no, well, they're not bad. No, unless just... you're running around on three hearts in a dungeon and gets, you know, <laughs> shot by a Stalfos. Or you lose your sword right before Ganon and you don't have a potion. There's a lot of things that can can go wrong, but uh, yeah, for sure. If Fred looks to be in a larger dungeon, so um, I would guess this is not going to be, you know, one of the first few. Probably a, a six, seven, eight, somewhere in there. So more, more exploration going on. Um, again, you're not going to see too much right now. You're going to see 
the, the, like we said, the first dynamic is when you have that first reset, when you have that first day one to day two change. But what you'll see from both these runners is as soon as they figure the seat out, they're going to absolutely start to fly. And whichever one does that first and is correct um, is probably going to be your winner. So that switch of turning exploration into I've got the seat down, let's go is going to be fun to watch here. Yeah, for sure. And again, it's going to be really cool to see the execution level because, you know, again, how much how good are you at mapping? Are you saver levels of mapping uh, every single dungeon? Because again, that's the real killer about this. They're going in and they're he's poking in this level, right? But how much of that do you really remember? I know I don't remember much uh, as <laughs> Pure Wolf with the right hand. Oh, I hate that. Landmolas, man. Yeah, they suck. <laughs> At least they're the red variety, so you could at least get around those. But uh, again, lots of dungeons found. Not a lot that you can do with a blue candle uh, and no sword when you're dealing with dark nuts and land mola and, you know, bunnies and all sorts of things. It makes it really, really difficult. So, uh, ah, man, there it is. Wood sword at the top of the waterfall. So that's good for Thurwolf. He's going to have that. It is kind of cool seeing the different strategy here, too. Thurwolf did a lot of overworld exploration. He's found a couple levels just like Fred did. Fred's chosen to actually go into those levels just a little bit more than Thurwolf. Um, Thurwolf now finding another one. He found this one a little bit earlier and chose to go up on top, which was wise to get that sword. Now he can explore this. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see how long Fred continues to dive dungeons until he gets back up on top of that waterfall. Yet again, it's. It's those first day shenanigans, right? You want to see if you could find that that one item to. I mean, at this point, you're you're ten minutes in. You're likely not going to finish anyway. But if you can find, uh, you know, an any key, or you can find a white sword or a wand, all of a sudden you can you can start exploring much faster, and uh, you can start slingshotting yourself to find more information, uh, and unfortunately, just not paying off. And Fred finding a big one there. He found the bow on the coast as the white sword item. So good knowledge to have. It's not something he's too worried about getting this first day or anything unless he sees a Goma block. Um, again, you're probably not going to beat Ganon right now, but just that knowledge of, okay, bow's on the coast. I'll go get it and route it in next day too whenever I need it or whenever I find arrows that I want to buy or, or silvers or something like that. Um, that knowledge he has right now over Thurwolf. Yeah, Fred trying to get in here to do this clip. And these Octorox are just not cooperating. Yeah, that clip's not a fun one, especially if you get, you know, like whiz robes or something around that corner and just <laughs> hanging out there. It's terrible. Oh, some of these screens are really bad. If you get orange whiz robes uh, that have the offset spawn. Oh, my gosh. It's just oh, yeah, those are the worst. <laughs> For you're sure. trying to burn a bush and you're just like, just, just let me burn the bush, man. <laughs> just give me two seconds, please. So the Thurwolf going to clear out a couple of these rooms here. Try to find... Oh, he finds a compass. So that's actually super helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Because they can grab Triforces now, see what level they're in if they want to. He's going to go ahead and go away from it and keep exploring for the item. Don't blame him. He's looking for things that, you know, could tell him, okay, this is just a Triforce level if you find a banana or something like that. Um, this is just a Triforce level or this is actually the item level um, that I want. Uh, be able to check both those things off. This looks like it's level two or level one, though, because he just found the power bracelet on the ground. Yeah, and, and that's actually a super good find uh, just because of the fact that you've got to be able to check those power bracelet spots. Uh, there's, I believe, uh, eight of them? Maybe seven. Yeah, seven somewhere around there. That, that sounds right. And ten recorder spots. So those are super important to have uh, in Mixed Overworld. Actually, there might be more than that even with Mixed. So, yeah, definitely need it. And Fred just not having any luck with this clip. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, we're looking at Thurwolf's side, and he's trying to get down there to be able to push, because you can push through walls. It's uh, second quest walls as well. Um, so it's important to remember that you might have to push through a wall, not use a bomb. Thurwolf's trying to get down here without using this key, and he's <laughs> tried anything he could do. If he's able to finally go through that wall, but he did lose his sword, so hopefully there's no combat here. There is. He's going to keep looking, though, I think. Yeah, Dick Dogger, but no block, which is nice. So he does pick up a Triforce. We will see... Uh, which one this is precisely. And unfortunately, Fred takes a death. They're trying to get into that level seven burn bush, which is uh, a little bit painful. Okay, so we had, it was two. level two, so that was a good check by Thurwolf's part. Thurwolf has the power bracelet out of there, has no need for the rest of this level, unless he wants to see if there's any more keys or anything that's quicker or not on his route. But I think he's going to get out of here and start looking at other ones that he's already found. 
I think he was going in there and checking his map to mark it down, which is smart. Uh, making note of exactly where everything that he found was. That way he can go back the next time and do it much, much quicker. Yeah, just making small notes like, you know, two over three up is your power bracelet or something like that. Well, it's what he's probably doing right there is is very, very wise because, okay, he's found that. You're going to remember that for the next five minutes. But let's say you go four, five, six dungeons deep here in this first day. Day two, you get back to that level. You're like, crap, where was that power bracelet? And then you're redigging the level all over again. And man, all sorts of Dark Nut dungeons, Landmola dungeons, no thank you, door trick, every time. Yeah, thank God for this door trick, right? <laughs> They're almost like, please, just just come die. Yeah, I, there's a there's a point where I get very impatient dealing with that, that's for sure. It's like, this is, this is a free kill, I've got a right door that's open, it's a free kill for me, but please die, guys. And Fred's finding another hard container at the Blue Ring Armos. So I don't know that we've seen the Armos item yet. Uh, I've not marked it down. No, I don't think we have as, as well. Uh, Coast item was the hard container, so not super important by any means. And man, these are some 6 HP Stalfos. Come on, game. That throw things. Come on, Stalfos, please. He does get a nice clock, though, which is going to help him out here. All right, survey says. Nowhere. Zip zilch nada, nothing there. Just a friendly aqua menace and a shutter door. And let's see if this is your Ooh. item room. Could be, but unfortunately, we need that recorder. Yeah, dick doggers abound in this seed. Oh, oh man, these aren't even playing friendly. Come on, agent. Hey, How many HP? 3 like HP! 15? 3 HP, but still, like, there is nothing worse than geese in a fireball room when they don't die in one hit. Like, if I'll take Maria most of the time. Anyway, I don't care if it's 3 or 15, I'm swearing. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. Now we just need Fred to make it to where they do two hearts of damage and everybody will be happy. I don't know if Fred is, is this is his strategy you know, every week or whatnot, but he is spending a lot of time without this sword right now. And I know he likes to get, you know, just kind of check off, you know, this is this level. This is, let's see if there's a free Triforce or a free item or something like that. But, man, Thurwolf just has such an edge in this day one with his sword able to explore a little bit deeper into dungeons. Yeah, it is a bit unusual, and I honestly don't know. Um, I Unfortunately, you know, I played all the way up until this last week, so I haven't had the opportunity to watch how Fred plays, but... Um, it is, it, you're, you are kind of right. Like, there's a, such a massive advantage right now for Theorwolf in the information department just due to how much he's been able to explore as uh, he does find another staircase. But, uh, you know, Fred using swordless blue candles to try to see if this is a staircase, and it's taken a lot of time. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm with you. I think he needs to kind of reprioritize here. You're 16 minutes in, you don't have the sword, you're not, you haven't got a, a significant item out of anything right now. Probably need to pack up this plan and do something different, but. He's in the finals and I'm not, so I'm going to watch and learn. Right? Exactly. I mean, and if it turns out that he finds a white sword or a wand, I mean, you know? I mean, that's the other thing that makes this really interesting is that there's second quest rooms, so you've got to clear out all these diagonal staircases, uh, all the, you know, the trap rooms. There's so many things you have to check. Uh, the maze rooms. So many things. And we have Gorilla with... Oh, with whiz robes. That's just terrible. Yeah, this is brutal. And like you're saying, because it's second quest rooms, there's more rooms to clear, which means going in swordless is even more of a risk than like a regular first quest set. So um, I think the overworld exploration needs to be prioritized, you know, pretty quickly here by Fred. Well, I mean, at this point, he's only got a couple of locations left. He has to know that it's Death Mountain or uh, the Waterfall area at this point. Um, if you're down in the southwest anyway, because that's one of my last places to check. Yeah, definitely. And that's one of those spots that once you make it to the southwest, if you find a level, you're like, well, crap, I don't want to come back down here. <laughs> so let's see if there's something quick that I can find real quick so I don't have to reroute myself. Yeah, and again, <clears throat> it, it seems like Fred is... Uh, well, again, the sword's important. You know that you're not going to complete in the first day. So while he doesn't have the sword, he's spending some time checking things, but he's also just digging around to see if there's something quick. Uh, it's it's a gamble, but if you do find something, then all of a sudden you're able to to move faster than your opponent. Unfortunately, he's just not had any of that luck, and because these dungeons are absolutely brutal. 
Oh yeah, there hasn't been a friendly set yet that he's seen because you have the mixed enemies and those types of things. So you're you're seeing patterns of enemies you're not used to um, seeing together. You're seeing red bubbles, which don't affect him so much, but they're just annoying because you're trying to clear the room with a candle. So it's just it's very tough right now doing what he's trying to do, and unfortunately, just has not been as lucky as you know maybe you could be in this situation if you find that early sword, the water, whatnot. Man, Deerwolf with his dancing shoes, but unfortunately not able to tap enough and takes a death before he can get over there to check that power bracelet spot which could contain something and there it is a free red candle dang that was uh that's a nice pickup for fred because you know his strat of going into these the levels is going to be a little bit better now unfortunately he does have dark nuts in there that we've seen in almost every level so those you can't clear with the candle but the red candle gives him a little bit of firepower now that if he puts off the sword any longer at least he's got something to fight back with yeah, and that's one of those items you really wish you found earlier. Uh, but again, it's just about how, how he's prioritizing things. And he's going to find this sword soon enough. Uh, he's found, you know, a lot of dungeons. He's done a lot of digging. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if he resets once he finds the sword. Uh, or maybe he tries to map out every dungeon that he can. This has got to be level one on Beowulf's side. Yeah, level one or a very unimpressive level two. <laughs> Well, it can't be two. There's only already done twelve two. rooms. Oh yeah, we've and we found two, so you're right. Yeah, it's I mean, it could one. be three or four. We, you know, we had that monstrosity of a six the other night in the secret to to everybody. Uh, that was like fifty five rooms, and like level three and four were truncated to almost nothing due to that. Yeah, and the, and the thing is, is that, you know, it's just maps one through six sharing the space, right? So the layout of them is just going to be dependent on how it rolls that time. Yeah, I think Thurwolf has the same idea. He knows where the Triforce is. He's looking for keys right now. He's thinking this is level one, so he's going to clear rooms, even though he knows where the Triforce is. So um, it'll be interesting to see what he's got. You know, a couple, a couple two quick early levels, you know, level one, level two, smaller ones. He's going to have some item knowledge here in the first 20 minutes. It's going to be, I don't think he's going to do, you know, uh, an early reset or anything like anytime now. But there's oh. a ladder right there. And if he were to find like the bow or something, he could take that risk. Yeah, we know the bow is in a... Uh, and that's another reason why Fred's checking around, right? He knows that the bow is in the White Sword Cave. Yeah, that's right. Or Silvers, I mean. Yeah, my, my apologies. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's just one of those things where... Fred has a little bit of a knowledge advantage right now, which helps. Uh, but, you know, Thierwolf has gotten into a few dungeons. And, had, and, I mean, the ladder is a super important pickup. It allows you to get around. Uh, we know it's not required for the item on the coast, but uh, it's still always nice to have it. Absolutely. Yeah, this was a, I knew it was going to be a tough one to call this because we have no knowledge of the levels this first time through. But uh, this is uh, right now, you know, with the knowledge advantage you said that Fred has with the bow, I think Thurwolf has more of a level knowledge inside, you know, the, the intimacy of the levels right now I would give to Thurwolf. So it's kind of a different knowledge advantage on each side, which is kind of a cool dynamic. Yeah, and we should see Fred getting his sword here pretty quick. And it's still a feel-bad moment. It's 22 minutes in almost. Like, that's a long time to get a sword. But, uh, you know, he's explored a majority of the overworld. And getting to the point where you got to check Death Mountain or maybe got to find that recorder because the bow may be underneath one of those spots. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, when we talk about randos and we call a match or we, you know, you watch one and we're not actually in it, we look at like a 15 or 20 minute sword and we're like, oh my gosh, you know, that's a horrible sword. You know, it took forever to get it. But when you get so much knowledge of the overworld and you know what you're going to do with the sword, and you know how to attack the seat after that, that time difference sometimes doesn't even matter. You can throw it out the window because you know how to attack the seat at that point. Yeah, and so really interesting here, right? So we've seen Fred dive in over and over and over to dungeons. He just leaves this one because I think he knows for a fact the sword must be in this cave. So, you know, kind of heads up by him, making sure that he goes and gets his weaponry. He should find the power bracelet and the Triforce here pretty quickly as well. Um, and then outside of level one, there's not a lot of knowledge difference here. No, you're exactly right. And Fred's actually going to have a little bit easier of a time because he's going to have the red candle in two where Thurwolf did not. So clearing some of these rooms might be a little bit quicker. So he should have actually a faster two than uh, Thurwolf did. And I mean, again, Thurwolf has not been down to the coast, so he does not have the information knowledge of the bow. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's eventually he'll get down there. But we've seen a couple of races where there's been, you know, in other flag sets where it's been 
down there's where the dungeon you need to go is and just because of the way routing works uh, he's already cleared everything else over there he knows he doesn't need the ladder item it's one of the last places you go back to and you, just, you know it costs you a lot of time and he's actually he's headed this way well, he's got three key doors here so i'm thinking he's just going to clear this room and go back north um little does he know the triforce is down south but that's good anyway because the item is above him right now so a couple rooms above him and to the right so like I said, Fred should have a little bit easier of a time clearing this. Unfortunately, these dark nets don't die to that red candle, um, but we'll see how he does in this too. Yeah, he did pick up the uh, the croissant already, and so he has that. He's just looking for the Triforce. I think this was the compass room. I could be wrong, but Thirwolf in yet another dungeon uh, as Fred takes a death. That's unfortunate, uh, but yeah, I mean, with the item in hand, do you leave? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Why, I mean, why would you stay here right now? Because you're just looking for knowledge. I mean, he, he kind of wants to know maybe, okay, I either want Triforce or Compass. But 23 minutes in, you only have 20 minutes left. You've only dug really a couple dungeons. I think I would bounce. Unless you think it's one and you're checking for one, maybe, because it's a floor drop. Yeah, I mean, that could be the case. Um... But still, man, it's it's rough. He should he should find the compass or the Triforce here pretty quick. The Triforce does require a key, but uh, yeah, it's it's just a rough thing because you're looking for that extra item because it could be one. But man, you're you're starting to run out of time, and you haven't really discovered all too much. Yeah, and again, this is you know weak nine of these flags well six or seven because of the forfeits and stuff these flags so these guys are you know they're not new to this flag set so he's had a strategy of how he's approached these unfortunately i think you know if you ask fred right now did this day one go well for you with your strategy well, absolutely not you know he would have had the sword faster or he'd have found something in a dungeon earlier or something but he's done this you know multiple weeks in a row so his strategy has paid off before and he's sticking to it no matter what and you know he kind of admired that yeah, for sure. And we do see Thirwolf skipping the Triforce here, uh, checking for the item. Um, we'll see how much longer he digs. Maybe grab the Triforce to figure out which dungeon this is uh, and if it's worth its time. Because, I mean, if you get a Triforce and you find out it's level 6, I may not dig that too much more. Yeah, absolutely, because 6 notoriously is huge in shapes. Ganon is required, so you need Bow and Silvers. Friend, unfortunately, does take a bop, but he does have a red candle, which will let him at least clear this room out. As long as he doesn't die in his own fire. And so kind of a recap of what we know right now. We know levels level one has the uh, ladder for us and a banana. Level two has the power bracelet. The heart is on the coast. The red candle was the armos item in the northwest and the bow, which is only known right now to Fred, was on the south coast in a bomb um, cave. So... That's pretty much it. I don't think we have any other item knowledge in the levels, do we? No, that's it. And Fred does get the map. Uh, that red candle actually paying off for him as he lost his sword. Uh, so we'll see how long it takes him to find the Triforce here. So Thurwolf is in three. He just found that out from the Triforce that he picked up. So he knows this is a smaller dungeon. It's probably worth a redig to try to find this item. Um, three is usually a smaller one. Yes, generally so. We've seen a couple of monster threes, but most of the time they, they're they not more than 20 rooms. So uh, he's already hit more than half of that. It's worth checking. Yeah, absolutely. And none of these dungeons are friendly at all. No, no, they're not. Luckily, those gels weren't, you know, 15 hit points as well. Oh my goodness, and it's a segmented three. Feels bad, man. Man, another death for Fred. Unfortunately, on the last enemy again, just like what happened earlier in two. Um, that's kind of just kind of a bummer. Yeah, putting a lot of time into this. Uh, I think really thinking that this is level one, which uh, it's going to be a disappointing thing whenever he finds out that it's not. Um, but I think the compass was actually in that blue level. Level one could room. be in there's a couple rooms that he hasn't been in yet, so he's kind of thinking, okay, maybe it's that, but um, I don't think he wants to pop this key, or he's just kind of clearing this to see. He's already got the floor drop, so this is very interesting. We do see the oh. book in three. Now, when he does get the walk through wall, so he's going to find the Triforce here. 
and grab it, which means he'll get the knowledge of level two. Yeah, and you saw Fred clearing that room, you know, looking for what the room drop was, what it could be the Triforce or whatnot. Thurwolf had the compass, so he knew he didn't want any part of that room, so it made it a little bit quicker for him. Yeah, and unfortunately with these flags, uh, the book doesn't actually do anything for you other than make you die in your fire even more if you have the wand. Uh, take a look. It's in a book. It's a flaming wand beam. Uh, unfortunately, don't want that here. Yeah, the book is absolute garbo. There's, there's no reason to have it. So what are you thinking? 28, 29, 30 minutes. Are you kind of in this for the full 40? Want some more info? If you're playing the seed right now, Agent, what are you thinking? I'm thinking I haven't found level 9. You want 9 before you reset? Absolutely. Because you got you know you need 6 Triforces. Silvers could be in there. So Fred has the knowledge of the bow. Finding level 9 is super important. Um, just because, again, you don't need all the Triforces. But you may... If you can clear everything on the overworld that you can access and you need the recorder you know that you need to dig dungeons for that item so it's super valuable information whereas if you leave spots available you don't necessarily know that and you still have to take the time to go back and check them yeah i'm with you i would highly be prioritizing let's do as much damage as possible in the next 10 minutes which is probably on the overworld like you're saying let's check everything we can that's not power bracelet blocked. well now he's got the power bracelet that's not recorder blocked um or raft blocked and just and cover as much info as possible I think we're going to see both these guys push the 45 limit here. Uh, again, they haven't found... I mean, Thurwolf's found the ladder, and Fred's found the information about the bow. That's all. Like, that's not a whole lot. Yeah, I'm going to go as far as just saying, I, I think just looking at this, the way this has kind of unfolded, this is probably a three-day seed that's got two pretty full days ahead of it. Fred Fred's got to be careful. These keys, again, 15 hit points apiece. You got to look out for that. Yeah, and the red candle will help, but I just, uh, with fireballs and everything else, like, I just feel like this is this is a terrible room. Yeah, this is one of those to where you're looking at just the fireballs and you're kind of hoping the per peripheral will keep you out of the way of a keys and can only take one bop there and he took two and unfortunately it's got to go back to start and make a decision here. He's bouncing. I mean, the good news is if you're going through this, you know, and, and these both of these guys have very, very good combat skills. Their combat levels are probably near identical. Fred's, I would actually say, is probably a little bit better just because his vanilla skills, but Thorolf's no slouch. He's a, you know, rando king um, and plays rando more than the vanilla, but I would say, you know, I put them on par with each other. Um, but if you're going through this and you're struggling, you're like, okay, my counterpart's probably struggling too. This isn't easy for anybody. So you don't have to panic because of what's going on. Um, you just have to deal with it better than the other person. Yeah, and I mean, I would... It's a tough call, right? Like, Thierwolf found his sword fairly early, but I wouldn't anticipate that my opponent would do that. Um, I would figure they'd find it around around the same time I did, because those are just the last places that you check naturally. It just so happened Thierwolf went there pretty early, and so he, he got lucky with that uh, aspect of it um getting that that sword pick up pretty early now we're still waiting for fred to find level one he hasn't found that yet so once he finds that ladder th these guys are on equal footing i mean outside of Thirwolf's done level three so he has some information there but overall i don't i don't know that there's so much difference overall no not really and i don't know um i didn't look over there has Thirwolf done the coast i mean does he know where the bow is no he has not yeah so that's even one more thing that kind of tilts it back and in Fred's favor a little bit. So if Thurwolf has level three advantage, Fred's got the bow advantage. So these guys are, like you said, on equal footing right now. Yeah, I mean, again, Thurwolf is eventually going to get there and eventually Fred's going to go to the forest and he's going to find level one. But I still think that the majority of what they're both kind of looking for while they run into a, a, a dungeon and search for an item is where the heck is level nine? I need to have that information and it's just not showing up. So I have a feeling it's recorder blocked. Or power, or you know, Death Mountain. They haven't gone there yet either. Yeah, and for chat asking what levels and stuff people are in, we apologize. Sometimes we just don't know until they pull a Triforce. Even if they pull a map right now, we don't know. 
Um, so because these are shapes and we have the levels hidden to us, we won't know until kind of day two and say, okay, now he's in level blah, 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 blah. You know, it's going to be easier that way. This first time through, we apologize. We know pretty much as much as you on what level they're in, unless the other person's already seen it. Yeah, and uh, Darewolf does get through that maze room in this dungeon here that Fred died and, and noped out of. And again, it's Gurias and Wizrobes. God, come on. <laughs> These two are terrible together because the Wizrobes are going to do more damage per hit. But the Gurias are the ones that are throwing the boomerangs and sniping you from the back. So while you're oh. worried about those Wizrobes, the Gurias are the ones actually hitting you. And that is another recorder block. Yeah, like, this is so wow. What a dude, I hope you brought man. a lunch or a snack or something because we're gonna be here tonight for a while, Agent. I got a bowl of chili and a cup of sweet tea, so I'm good to go. I might go up and make some popcorn and give you comms for a little bit. <laughs> I wouldn't blame you, man. Uh, this is insane. And again, this is kind of like this is a lot like that seed where we had a lot of forfeits, and I think the Thier Wolf won that with like a time of two hours and 30 minutes and i was a couple of minutes behind him but it's just this sort of thing where you're trying to get the information of where things are in the dungeons and the shapes are not helping by any means whatsoever which he gets a map which is going to help a lot because he's now going to be able to oh my <laughs> oh, god <that's> help. <laughs> oh! <laughs> dude that is oh! <laughs> that <laughs> nope even said nope <laughs> So yeah, um, that's why it's going to take some time because they've got 11 minutes left and you got a dungeon like that to search for an item. <laughs> Just They're all legit uh, did that and said, no, no. <laughs> God. Especially if it's level six, there's five staircases due to this segment, which means only one of them is going to have your item. Um, I guarantee wow. you. I guarantee you, day two, Thurwolf doesn't even go to that dungeon. He's going to go everywhere else, look for all the other items, and play Process of Elimination. If he has to go back to it, he will. But why dig that dungeon when it may just be one blue boomerang, you know? You only need six Triforces. That's one that you can mark off and say, nope, I'm going to make the game force me to go back there. Yeah, and I mean, Fred's now in level one, so he's going to get the ladder knowledge, which is super important. Uh, and we've got ten minutes till the first reset. So at this point, Thurwolf, while yes, he found the map, and yes, he could take some time, he still has a lot of places on the overworld left to check. And again, like we were pointing out, it's super important to know if you need to have an additional item outside of the power bracelet to find level nine. Now, I don't think that either of these guys are going to get up to Death Mountain. So there'll be a couple of spots left. But man, this is just nasty. Yeah, this is pretty brutal. Um, but admit it, I want to ask you a question. If you're Fred and you got the map and you've got the compass, you're going to pull out your cell phone and take a quick picture? <laughs> because that's something I would do. Uh, that's good. So we might see Thierwolf get down to the coast in time uh, to find this bow. I think we will, which is going to be good for him. So basically, we're going to reset the first day with... Thierwolf having slightly more knowledge about level 3 and whatever monstrosity that was down in the southwest. Yeah, and he's going to just have enough time here to grab the bow. Um, he's not going to know exactly how many hearts it is because he's over the heart limit. I mean, it's it's got 7 right now. It's 4 to 6. Um, but yeah, I mean, finding this bow here at the end of day 1 is actually going to be pretty comforting for Thurwolf. Of everything that went wrong, that's one thing to have in your back pocket that's going to feel really nice right now. And I'm pretty sure Fred got his ladder. Or has he not been in that room yet? Yeah, he, he grabbed it. He was in the room. Okay. So, yeah. I mean... 45 minutes and we're starting basically from scratch. Yeah, here we go, guys. Let's do this all again. I mean, fortunately, they'll have that wood sword faster. But I think you're right. I think this is going to be a day three finish. Just because there's still so much exploration to do in these dungeons, you got to find out where the silvers are. Um, you still need to find level nine, so it's looking like we've got to get maybe a, a recorder somewhere. Silvers could be a nine as well, so we may see these guys grab six Triforces, which we've only seen two thus far, uh, and then head straight to level nine looking for the silvers. There's so many different options, but uh, I don't think it's going to happen on the second day. 
yeah, you might even see them book it and, okay, let's go ahead and get the sword. Let's do whatever of level two that I can to get the power bracelet and, and the uh, um, the Triforce because it's right there and then go straight up to Death Mountain and see if there's a level or two up there. See if there's like a quick item. See if maybe level eight's up there with a couple items or something that can help out in their exploration. Um, having the power bracelet opens up that spot in the Northwest, maybe. Um, so I think, yeah, I think that their wood sword and Northwest play is what I would do if it was my day two. Well, and you can see them fishing for bombs. Fred is making his way around that now. Uh, he is going to find level three. I would highly doubt that he spends too much time in it. Um, as we see, Thierwolf is up here on Death Mountain checking these spots now. Uh, but, you know, with, with so little time and you've got eight bombs, you really want the information of, okay, is level nine on Death Mountain or do I need to find a recorder or raft? Yeah, I like this play by Thurl, because especially, too, when you start day two, you start with nothing, right? You can get the wood sword, but you don't have a bomb shop. You don't have, I mean, hopefully you wrote down where money was and where a bomb shop was, but you don't have bombs yet. Um, you don't have anything where you can go instantly straight into um, Death Mountain and check. You've got bombs now. You, you can set your counts. You've got seven minutes left. See how much of Death Mountain you can do right now. And I like this play by Thurl going up here and doing it. And Fred proving me wrong once again. Fred going to do what Fred going to do. I mean, it, at the rate he's going, he well, he's got to take the. I don't think he has to take the staircase to find the item, so he should find the item, which is going to be useful, um, and allow him to at least bail out at that point. You saw that large too, right? Fifty-two. Yes, we saw one of those earlier from Fred, and it's uh, it's it's nasty, terrible. One dollar small, fifty-two large. Hope you're not buying anything this seed. Meat and arrows required. So really the only thing Thurwolf can check up here is that one power bracelet spot in the Northwest. Be interesting to see if he makes a play for it or not. I think he's going to make a break for it. Yeah, I mean, we still got five minutes, right? Um, he's hoping to get some bomb drops along the way, but uh, Fred is going to find the Triforce. He'll find out that this is level three, uh, likely to jot down that information and hopefully head to Death Mountain. Uh, I think the knowledge here is more important uh, as far as like if you need to get something else versus picking up an item in here. Um, but we'll see what he does. Uh, he's going to go back in. He's going to go back in. He's going to spend to use the or choose to lose the use the last five minutes on a known level instead of, you know, just bombing open things that would take, you know, 30, 45 seconds, a minute to start routing through the Northwest. And he's calling an audible again. Looks like he is going to okay. go to the Northwest. He's got seven bombs. Yeah, I mean, I, I really like this play by Fred. He, he's got to be looking at the clock saying, OK, I'm at 40 minutes, 30 seconds. Let's go get some information. Uh, I could spend all that time in here to find out that it's nothing important, but finding those last two levels is big. As we see, Theorwolf does take a restart, um, and he's going to immediately head over for that red candle. Yeah, I like the play, um, especially if he wrote down kind of what levels are susceptible to a red candle. I would even restart again right now. Is there one because that's you're having susceptible problems. to a red candle? <laughs> that's probably a good point. But uh, he knows it's uh, got a little bit of power, a little bit of range. It can multiple attacks, that type of thing. It may even just help him get to the wood sword because of the overworld as well. Oh, for sure. I mean, being able to candle boost is a huge boon when you got some really crappy screens to deal with. So the Northwest here, five bombs, not enough. I was actually, or six bombs is not enough. I'm surprised Fred did not take the time to purchase. Uh, with mixed overworlds, um, He's going to have one, two, three, four, five spots left. Okay, so what you see Thurl doing right now is he's going to try to route these as efficiently and quickly as possible. He's going to go, and I think there's a heart right here um, at this open cave. So he's going to grab a heart. Um, he's already got his candle. He doesn't have to worry about that. He's going to go up and grab his wood sword, pop level two, and then we'll see what he does after that. But that's pretty much um, a given on what these guys are going to start with in day two. Yeah, so Fred, Fred is going to be one bomb short of checking everything on Death Mountain. But at this point, if there is not a dungeon in this spot, then we know for a fact that one of the what a dungeon is blocked by the recorder of the Triforce. Yeah, absolutely. So, so having that knowledge, I mean, that Fred does. Fred's going to go ahead and reset right here. Forty-two twenty-three was his reset. Um, 
this day two is going to be inter interesting, man. We have so much we still need to learn about this. If you think about it, two very, very good rando players only having info on levels one, two, three, and then the overworld stuff, right? We have nothing on four through nine yet. Indeed. And one thing that Fred just did that I would like to note that I always forgot to do, he reset his console, which means that the first enemy actually has a chance to drop a bomb. If you don't reset your console, it saves what you previously had in your bank, and it may not be a chance to drop a bomb. Yeah, you better know your global if you don't do a hard reset like that, like you said. So heads up by Fred on, on that aspect. So Fred going to grab his singular rupee, rich beyond measure. He definitely made note of that, sir. It's his red candle. All right, so we see there, Wolf. He grabbed his wood sword. He's immediately going back to, I believe this was level two. Uh, he's going to grab a key here. He doesn't have any bombs. I don't remember if he can get where he needs to get without a bomb. I think so. Yeah, this this is the part of the routing that we talked about, right? You gotta, you know, write down how many keys you need and write down how many bombs you need to get somewhere because even though somewhere might be the fastest, you know, as the crow flies, on, when your boots are on the ground and you actually have to go through these rooms, you may need something, that item that you don't have right now. So you see Thurwolf trying to knock out some of these enemies and hopefully getting a bomb drop from the orange dark nets, but this is taking valuable time away from his day two exploration because of the way he routed this. Yeah, and I think he's actually, he's obviously looking for a bomb, but he also needs a key, I think, to get down to the south portion to, oh, and a clock, which is super nice. Yeah, clock is three, he's got to do this right, so that's going to be five. This is six right here. He's got a six and eight chance both if he goes over the blue dark net next. That was Ooh. seven. Yeah, he should have done the yeah, blue dark net there and done that in reverse. Unfortunately, he did not. Yeah, okay, so this was the compass room. Uh, I thought that was a key, but uh, yeah, still need a key to get down to the Triforce, and I think he has had to have written one down or maybe not i'm speaking yeah, so, too soon so nora in chat wants us to point out again what they're doing so again this is um called the groundhogs day tournament the puxa canny phil thing dude <laughs> yes um, yeah so basically what's happening is groundhogs day they have 45 minutes and you see thurwolf doing it again so he's gonna have a very quick day three here that day two is so short because of the way he routed that he wants to start over they got 45 minutes to beat the seed they can reset anytime they want to in that 45 minutes, but once that 45 oh. minutes comes up, they have to reset. It's a mandatory one. So they have 45 minutes to beat it. Thurwolf thought he wanted to do a certain way of routing the beginning of this and, and found out, okay, maybe I'm key blocked or now I'm bomb blocked. It's not going to work. Now I just wasted four or five minutes. I'm going to reset again. So you see that reset timer by their names. We're keeping track of their last reset so you can see when 45 minutes from that point will be. That's when they're going to have to take a mandatory one. So they've got to kill Ganon and save the girl within that 45-minute time window. We've had people reset as they're walking into the room where Zelda's door opens. It takes 45 minutes. It's heartbreaking, but it's happened. Yeah, it's just, it's it's a mandatory thing, right? You have 45 minutes, and what you have to, the way you have to think of it, like in the context, is if you've seen the movie Groundhog's Day, or if you've seen any type of movie like that to where you repeat things over and over, you don't have control of that. It just automatically happens, and that's what's happening at the 45-minute mark. Yeah, and so Fred, making an interesting choice, I think he ran into the same problem that Thierwolf did of... Uh, I can't do this because I don't have enough keys, but he chose to save with the key and leave, having gotten the Triforce out of, or not the item out of there, but he knows that he still has to find other items, so I like this play. He's going to take the key, not get the Triforce, but he's going to have to explore other dungeons anyways, so he may be able to get the six regardless. Yeah, and, and for people that are watching this now that are kind of fascinated or, ri fascinated or riveted by this, day two is way more interesting than day one because now you have a little bit of info and it's, okay, who can capitalize on the info that they have better and more efficiently? So this day two is so important in this entire seed, um, probably more important than even the final day that these runners actually create. This day two is kind of capitalizing on everything that they learned in day one, and you'll see somebody pull ahead because of, because of how they route this right here. Yeah, and Thierwolf on day three, but that's his day two was so quick. Well, you know, uh, it doesn't really matter. You know but, what I'm saying? Yeah, I, and for sure. I mean, these these middle ones are super important because you start to feel behind, right? And so then you start taking major risks, and it's also where you, I, I say you you fine tune your routing 
Because again, like when you're doing Router's Relish, you have a week to say, okay, I need keys here, I need keys here, I need keys here. The first time you're going through, you're like in this frantic mode kind of. Okay, well, I found a dungeon. Let's see if I can find something. You're not logging down. Okay, I found a key here. I found a key here. There's not really a lot of time to do that. So now this second time through, Fred and, and Therwolf both know, okay, I don't have enough keys to get through level two. So maybe I could pick one up somewhere else. Or maybe I just go in and get that power bracelet, grab the free key, and I get a Triforce elsewhere on my third time through. Yeah, and we talked about kind of what they were doing in day one, right? Kind of where that reset point was going to be. Okay, when I get enough info, I'm going to reset. Well, they didn't have enough, so they went to the full 40, 42 minutes, 43 minutes. Day two, what you're looking at here is as soon as somebody says, okay, now I have enough to beat this seed comfortably in 45 minutes, they're going to do a reset, or their decision point's going to be, I think I can do this. In the first 15, 20 minutes, if I find out anything more that's going to make this seed fly, let's say they find silvers or they find a couple extra Triforces, you may see one of them push and not reset and just go for it. Um, I mean, Thurwolf right now is on four minutes with the Triforce, Power Bracelet, Wood Sword, Red Candle. That's very fast for a rando seed. So yeah, he, if he picks up anything else, and sorry to cut you off there, if he picks up anything else, you may see him just make a push right here in day three just to go. Yeah, for sure. And actually, he was able to get the Triforce. It was a bomb wall, not a key door. So he knew how to get there. And so he's basically, again, he's fine tuning his routing. He went to two first. Uh, I don't think he got the power bracelet, which I don't think has led to anything. He knows that the power bracelet's not required. So yeah. he's, uh, he's not getting it. He's just grabbed his key, grabbed his Triforce, got his wood sword, and off we go. Yeah, maybe he checked all the power bracelet spots, and that was part of his strategy. I didn't keep track individually of what Thurwolf did, but if he checked every single one and it was nothing, that's wasted time in two that you don't have to have. And that knowledge from day one makes a lot of sense. You see Fred saying, okay, that ladder is probably important to get me efficiently through levels. I'm going to prioritize level one. So you see Fred doing something slightly different. He went to level one and grabbed that. Well, and he also could pick up a lot of keys here, right? Which is super important. Uh, he's also getting a sixth heart container, which he's routed in perfectly to pick up the bow. Uh, so he's going to have that ability as well. So he's not going to have to come back at all to the southwest or southeast portion of the map. Uh, and, and so he's he's done a really good job with that. So he's going to get himself the six hearts, get a bow, um, and that way he can just go I, di dungeon diving, I guess, to figure out where the heck the recorder or the raft is. Yeah, I like the play on, on both their parts. I mean, this is, like we said, it's a lot of fun to watch. We knew day two, or day three in Thurl's case, is going to be where the rubber meets the road, and these guys are actually going to put some strategies into work, and, and they've started doing the routing in their head of what their final routing is going to be, and this may even be the final routing if somebody's able to pull off enough stuff quick enough. And I'd also like to mention the fantastic difference between console and emulator colors. Emulator for life! Never. All right, so Fred now, which which level is he in? This might be one that we don't know yet. We do not. This is one of the ones close to... <clears throat> mm, sorry, close to start. Is that Chili? Chili get you there, dude? <laughs> All right, so we do see Thurwolf heading now to Death Mountain, it looks like. Um, he's going to check the Forgotten Spot, maybe, and then head up there. Nope, he's going and unlocking the door at the top of level three. So that's what he was doing by going up north, coming back down. It pops that door for him. So Thurwolf going to investigate level three a little bit further. Um, I do know he got the book out of here and the Triforce, I believe. So this should be a pretty quick three for Thurwolf. He has all the knowledge of this level. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting to me, uh, obviously doing a good job saving keys, but what's interesting to me is that he's taking the time to get the Triforces out of these dungeons versus exploring the ones that he hasn't been in. Um, I mean, obviously they're there and he's routing it in, but you're going to have to spend a bunch of time checking these other dungeons. So, I mean, to me, what this is signaling is he's going for it on this day uh, without having the knowledge of where the silvers are. Uh, which could be anywhere, and he's got to find four more Triforces, or three more Triforces as well. So we'll see how this pans out for him. Yeah, three Triforces in seven minutes now, almost eight minutes for Thurwolf is flying. Um, if you have a 45-minute cap, if you have knowledge of everything else, like you said, the unknown for him 
is we don't know where nine is. We don't know if something's recorder block. We don't know if something, you know, and we, we think it has to be at this point. Um, but he has so many unknowns that can he answer those unknowns with the remainder of time that he has, that's going to make or break it for him. And whereas Fred, if Fred, you know, does a little more exploration here, Fred could get a little more of a knowledge advantage in other levels that, you know, Thurlop's getting Triforces, like you said, and may be able to uh, shore up that gap a little bit. Yeah, and Fred using, uh, you know, block clip techniques to deal with these blue land mola. Uh, never a bad idea, as those guys are absolute jerks. I think he died enough in day one in some of these dungeons that he said, that is not going to happen anymore. I'm not going to waste my time coming back to start in levels, having to redo it. So just watch out, because these guys will end your day quickly. Yeah, and he does get over here. I believe this is, this is level three that he's in. So he's going to grab this book. Um, oh, man. No, he's not. Fred. Take the dead from the traps, Fred, please. Actually, I think that was maybe... Uh, wasn't three segmented? Yes, you're right. So he's got quite a bit to go still in this three to get up there. Uh, Look at see that. The, now. the tornado dungeon. <laughs> I was going to say, the guy's either like leaning backwards like on his back. I don't know. This is likely to be level four just from the size and the fact that we've already found one, two, and three. It has got whisk ropes. Yay. Yeah, Throw us on a mission right here for this item, so I'm, I'm very curious to see what's here. <laughs> you know what's here? Patra. This game. Every single dungeon is just brutal. Hey, so you're like, okay, orange whisk robes, that, that's a pretty easy... Oh, man, come on! <laughs> Given the two rooms, I, <laughs> I'm going to clear this one. Yeah, I mean, they didn't roll nice HP either. These guys are beefy as all get out. Yeah, nothing has come easy. He doesn't want to grab a Triforce, which is why he stood to the side there wisely to kill that last Wizro. Oh my gosh! Pretty heads up by Thurlop and another, like, back to back Patras. Come on. They come in threes here, right? Right, so this is going to tell us what level this was. This is four. Yes, you were right. So this is four up in the northeast. Um, he does not have any item knowledge of what this is. It's up to him if he wants to continue to go through with it to finish this off. He is going to, looks like he's going to try to pop this door. He is. He's going to go down to the bottom hook of this um, southeast portion of the four. See if he can find this item. Yeah, and I mean, this is obviously the shortest option. We did see that map earlier from... Uh, whatever that monstrosity was, and I would definitely hope to find the silvers here uh, and not have to deal with those kind of places. And I would say let's go ahead and write down that bomb upgrade, but with the large the way it was and money the way it's going to be this seed, it's not going to come into play. No. Uh, should be the item here. Okay. Super. That's pretty helpful for him because we haven't found nine that's going to give him so much more overworld to check. And nine could have silvers for all he knows. You could see Thurwolf making a very hard push to end this right here in day three for him. Yeah, I mean, with the ability to check with all the two locations on the overworld, uh, I, I really feel like that's what he's just doing now is let's, let's go check those spots and get done with this. Find where level nine is uh, as he immediately jumps into a dungeon and proves me wrong. Yeah, I'd have been very, very curious to see him do some overworld routing and say, okay, let me find where that level nine is. If it is recorder blocked or whatnot, or maybe there's another level or whatever, see what's in there too. Reroute myself, reset one more time and go. But we do not have any knowledge of the uh, the dungeon that Thurlop's in right now. We don't have what level it is. We don't have the items in it. So we know nothing about this one. And boldly spins his last key. Super Aquamentus. Able to get the compass, but nothing else. Maybe he can try to go left here, and he's just going to up A and get out of this level. Nope, he's coming back. Well, he does find a key. That'll allow him to at least continue exploring.
And Fred making progress on his side, trying to get through this level. He's left the Triforce on the floor. He knows where that is now. He's just looking for the item, and I believe this was it. Was, was it not? Oh, no, this is the segment. Yeah, Fred going to be disappointed. I think this was level three, so it's the book. Yeah, I think it's the book. Oh, My man. God, these levels, man. Oh, hey, it looks like what it has. I guess that works out. <laughs> That's right. It takes the shape of its owner. Well, that's helpful, too. He knows now he doesn't need the meat. He's got a pretty quick access to where the Triforce is. Triforce on the ground here. Thorob's going to check and see what level this is, but probably looking at a 5 there or maybe a 7. I would say 5. I mean, that would just make sense due to the fact that... Uh, no, that was a 7. You're right. Yeah, it could have been a 7. You know, 7s sometimes have that, you know, kind of looks like a linear shape medium size, medium to large, that type of thing. Um, I don't mind digging sevens usually in, in shapes. Man, that means eight is massive, because that was a pretty small seven. And eight's going to be segmented, too. Just, I mean, like five, I would almost guarantee five, it's on either side of that thing. Like a bunch of th uh, one-room staircases, of which one contains the Triforce or something. <laughs> Jader making a great point in chat. I can always tell when it's level seven. Indeed. Mark it down, says Liquid Husband. Indeed. <laughs> Come on, man. All right, Thrillf isn't going to get this bow um, in the off chance that he finds the arrow somewhere else. Again, guys, he has five Triforces. So he just needs one more to get into nine. And if nine has the silvers, then he's home free. So he's just looking for one more Triforce. His reset was at 44. On his clock right now, when on his timer, his personal one, he's reading 14 minutes. 14 and a half minutes right now. So he has 30 minutes to find one more Triforce, dig nine, um, and he could do this in day three right here. So you'll, like I said, Thurl is going to make a strong push to end it right now, but he's going to need a little bit of luck in finding what he needs to find. Man, imagine if it's Raft. Oh, it could be Raft. It could be that large six that we saw earlier. I mean, it could be anything that could thwart that attempt, but I like the push by Thurl. It makes a lot of sense with the time and resources he has. Oh, for sure. I mean, you've got 30 minutes left. You've got a few spots to check, but uh, at this point, you just need a single Triforce uh, and the location of level 9. So, I mean, you're you're on a warpath at this point. So here's the question. He knows where level 6 is, too. It's just to the northeast of Vanilla Start. That could be his last Triforce right here, just right on our start screen here. Um, that could be his fifth Triforce, too. I mean, he's probably going to be looking for 5, because it's going to be, you know, smaller than level six. He hasn't found eight yet either. That might be in the southwest corner. Um, it's going to be kind of interesting to see how Thurl wants to finish this out. Kind of remember, he has not checked Death Mountain yet either. Yeah, it's true. And unfortunately, there's really nothing up there. There was one bomb spot you said we didn't get to. Yes, sir. It is the. Uh... Well, it's, B it's A3, so there's not even a 100% chance that it's there, but there is that spot that wasn't checked. And, and there's level 8. Or, and it's a level. Or something. Or 5. Maybe 5. Whatever it is, it's a high priority of Thurwolf because it's unknown information to him. He wants to dig this complete, 100%. He wants the item out of here. He wants the Triforce out of here because if he does not win on day 3, he wants to know whether or not he has to come back here. Two old men with nothing to say. Must be a pretty boring life living next to uh, to somebody who never talks. As so we do see a staircase here. So he gets double fairies. Very nice. Yeah, his combat's been on point two. Um, kind of like he's like we said, we know somebody's going to flip the switch. Thorough already flipped that switch. I think Fred's still in the discovery phase, which is fine. That's that's what you would expect right now. Thorough just has 
gotten things a little bit faster, a little, bit, a little more fortunate with the levels and the items that he's found and the order he's found them. I think Fred's still in discovery and Thorough is in full go mode right now. So um, whether or not it works out for him, they could both reset at the exact same time, you know, here in the next 20, 25 minutes or whatnot and be back on equal footing because of the Groundhog's Day rules. Thorough, unfortunately, just does not have a key to go left. Which he was trying to kinetic kind of key, but man, with the tra with traps and the gels, that's so hard. Yeah, he got bopped off it right at the last second. It was a good attempt for the kinetic key, too. And all these key doors and rooms you just don't want to clear. I, I imagine he's going to go bomb around, try to walk through some walls, and then maybe we'll head to uh, head to the staircase there. Oh, that was a helpful bomb north there. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Get a, get a, this seed, man. This seed's been great. I mean, to end on a, a finals like this, you don't want something that's going to be, you know, these guys are done in 30 minutes a piece, that type of thing. You wanted something like this to be a finals. Right. And, and the other thing to consider, too, is that if nine doesn't give you keys, uh, <laughs> like, ouch. Yeah, what do you do, right? And, and just nothing here. Just you walk into a stone black room of nothing. I mean, he's still got a lot of time, no doubt. It's just, it's really frustrating to have, all right, I just need one Triforce and Silver Arrows, and then you stall for 30 minutes. And I've had it happen. It's really frustrating. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you're just, you're making so much progress. And that's what we talked about before. You know, people say, you know, how can you do this in 45 minutes? Well, with knowledge, the seeds do go fast. That's why the router's relishes were under 20 minutes, you know, at times. And the winter was always 18, 19 minutes, that type of thing. The same thing here, you know, with knowledge, Thurwolf got five Triforces in the first 20 minutes here with a bunch of stuff. I mean, everything but the Silvers and level nine. But you come to a standstill when you don't have the knowledge. As soon as that knowledge switch turns off, now you see what everybody goes through in a regular rando season. That's what's going on with Thurwolf right now. Yeah, and it's pretty amazing, right? Like, it just proves how hard vanilla really is when the world record is 28-26. And people doing Router's Relish are finishing it out in 18 or 19 minutes every time. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you got to think about it. The vanilla game is pre-planned by programmers to put the Triforce in the last place you're going to look. And that type of thing. It's going to be the furthest from the start. And sometimes with the Router's Relish seed, it was like one room over, right? Because it's rando. So sometimes that's going to lead to a little bit quicker of things, but but still, yeah, the vanilla game is is ridiculously hard, and the people who put up world records in this game, and um, the Lax, the Unos, and those people that are just fantastic at this FAP, those types of people, they're just they're, they're amazing at what they do. So Fred back in this dungeon, he died in earlier, which I don't remember which one this is. I don't know that we have. Oh, this is that that thing. This is the six. Is oh, it's Fred six. Is, okay, it's not the thing. I don't think this is the thing. I'm still hoping that we have to go to the. It might thing. be the thing. I might be wrong because my memory is terrible. Let's let's hope it's the thing. Throw get his sword taken away, or just like refuse to use it down there. Uh, well, I mean, it's three HP keys, so why bother? <laughs> I mean, sword buffer, man. Let's go through. He is going to bounce, though. I don't. Did he get an item out of there? I don't think so. Okay, so he's choosing to use a little more time. Okay, he's got level knowledge. That's not going to be a place. I think he just, like you said, wants to find nine really, really badly. Well, I mean, this is rough, too, because he's out of keys, um, and he died pretty deep in that dungeon. Uh... So, I mean, at this point, you still got to get a Triforce, but he's still got a lot of overworld left to check. And so, you know, again, your 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 clock is ticking down and you still got to find something. And it was that thing that Fred is in. Oh, he is in the thing. OK. Yeah, you're third wolf right now. You're you're looking at it was 15 minutes and you were flying and now you're starting to look, OK, 22, 23 minutes. You're gripping your control a little tighter. Am I going to do this? Am I going to waste 15 minutes going through things? I'm going to have to reset anyway and do this all over again. Do I make the decision right now because I have more info? There's so many things going on in your head. Fred is going to decide right now if he wants to pick up this Triforce or dig a couple more rooms and then go back and get it and see what level he's in. Yeah, I mean, like, that's a nice free Triforce, but... <laughs> Don't die here. This place. And of course, Blue Gorilla never drop hearts when you are at one heart, ever. Oh, they, well, always when you're full.
Well, helpful. But that's not Sometimes. what you want the wand to be in this because it's not an easy dig early where it could be beneficial to route it. I think he feels this is level eight. Um, and so he's... I'm not sure. You gotta just grab the, the Triforce eight, and confirm, but... right? I mean, you can't bomb there. So grab the Triforce, see what it is. See if you need to keep... I, I've been... At this point, he can't go north. So definitely going to... But he's sitting here thinking, I gotta get around whiz robes to get this thing. Fred's got the skills. We're finally going to know what level this is. And uh, Thierwolf in the other one, and look at this map. Like, Jiminy Christmas. Alright, that was 8. We knew 7 was diagonal, and so that made sense that that fit around this 8, just the way the shape is. Because remember that that seven was you know southwest to northeast. It fits right in the middle there. So Fred is back in looking for the other item here. So this could still be beneficial to him. And Thirwolf clearing out what possibly could be a staircase room here. So many potential rooms when you put in mixed and second quest rooms and all that. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of clearing, and shapes is is not helping it at all. Fortunately, I mean the maps were fairly accessible. Uh, which is helping out Fred a lot with this dungeon because there is a lot of opportunities to waste all of your bombs. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And so we have perfect knowledge now of all the levels except for level nine. Like you said, if that's that wrap spot, man. <laughs> that would be terrible. And I mean, imagine <laughs> if the wrap is the second item in here. Like, holy mama. I mean, and that's one thing that could vault Fred maybe back into contention, if not the lead. If this raft and raft was nine, and Thurwolf's going to go through that level last out of everything, that's something that Fred's going to have just one piece of knowledge that Thurwolf just does not have. And look at this, Nasty. You have to go through red bubbles to get to yeah. the north part of this dungeon. Don't even wait. Just go hit it and hope you have a blue bubble on the other side because you're probably not going to get out of here without hitting one. Oh, baby, Except he did for it. that, beauty! Third one says, Redbird, please. Check this out. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and never mind. Oh, that's so evil. <laughs> What are you gonna do? So now what? Yeah. <laughs> so so what do you do now? Oh man, that's terrible. I guess it's not to get to the north part, but either way, like, what the heck? This is one more way the game can say, "Hey, check this out." It's amazing. Fred's still digging around and just not finding the other item here, or the staircase to get to the other side. Fred's in a uh, level that. Has eight billion rooms. Thurlow's in a level where he just used one of the one of the best candle uses I've seen in a while. But the game says, "Hey, you want to clip that? Clip this. Just let me show you something." <laughs> he tried. He really did. But they're just so fast. Man, no key drop. It's the heart drop. Unfortunately, he wanted to go left right there. Yeah, and that's what's really killing Thirwolf is is there's no keys. Um, and unfortunately, when you haven't routed this all out. Uh, you end up needing a lot more keys than you would normally think. Thorough just showing off now, doing candle bumps whenever he wants to. Oh, no. I think this is a priority room for Fred, though. He's got to clear this room because I believe this is going to oh, be his item. The low HP on the blue whiz robes. Yeah, that was very helpful. This is, uh, this is a priority room for Fred. This is going to be Red Ring. Well, yeah. You don't dig that out the next time, though. You don't go to eight the next time. Now, no. I mean, it's an easy Triforce. Now, let's say this. It is very, very easy to get to that Triforce. So you may route that it is one of your six. But now you know you don't have to dig anything else. And you may get the wand because it was pretty close to where the Triforce was. But you're not going to dig the red ring out. It's just one of those levels that you can have in your back pocket if you need to get the six and can't do it any other way. Yeah, at this point, Fred needs to get to four which is where he looks to be heading uh this is going to net him the recorder uh unfortunately he started to run out of time so he's probably only going to be able to get in a few checks and then gonna have to make a reset but going to have all the knowledge that he needs um as far as being able to, to route things out hopefully at that point is the still has to go up here and bomb death mountain and we still have not located level nine 
not located at level nine. And what I would say is that if Thurwolf finds a level or decides to find a Triforce in five or six or whatnot and goes through those two, um, if he makes a play for Silvers being a nine, we're 50% that Silvers are a nine right now. So it's going to work out for him not ever stepping in level eight because one and Red Ring are not necessary. A little does he know that Triforce is so quick in level eight that it could just lead him straight to level nine. Yeah, they're not sure what Darewolf's doing. Maybe he's going to... Oh, okay, so he's going to loop, check the level vanilla level 7, check the Grave Spot recorder locations here, uh, as well as the Dead Woods location. So going to knock out three here. Um, feeling he's out, of, he's out of bombs, right? He doesn't have any bombs, so this is the better choice as far as being able to uh, actually clear a few things out. Yeah, resource-wise right now, Fred's got the advantage. I mean, he's a Triforce down, but he has three keys. He's in the level he needs to be. He's going to get the recorder out of here. That'll give him his fourth Triforce here, and then he'll be able to find level five and maybe do some damage in level five with more keys than Thorwolf had. Um, don't look now, but maybe Fred makes the push. Yeah, I mean, again, it's about finding that level nine and just getting the recorder. There are so many locations to check. Um, and if it happens to be the raft... <laughs> don't say that, dude. You know it's going to be because you're saying it. I don't want it to be, but oh my goodness. As Fred finds the yeah. Triforce there. Guaranteed. Oh, it's it is. Nine. Okay, vanilla 7, recorder required. Recorder was in 4, which Fred, if he doesn't leave here, is going to find as well. But Thurwolf has the upper hand now with the knowledge of where 9 is. Wow. Yeah, so one Triforce needed for both of these guys. Okay, so what do you need to know? If I'm going to catch you up right now and, and just give you kind of the uh, the clips notes of everything that's happened here, these guys are on almost minute 30, 32 of, you know, respectively between Thurwolf and Fred of their 45 minutes. They've got to decide when they want to reset. If they want to push and get this done in 45, they have the opportunity to. But once they get to 45, they've got to reset. Is a hard reset. It's mandatory because of the flags we're doing in the, the rules of this rando. So... What they know right now is they have five of the six Triforces. They both have the bow knowledge. They both have ladder, those types of things. Fred doesn't know where nine is. Thorwolf does. That's pretty much it. That's that's the difference in them right now. Otherwise, they're pretty much right on par with each other. Um, Thorwolf has found level five in the northwestern part of the desert. Um, but Fred has all the knowledge of what level eight holds. So he has that over Thorwolf. So these guys are, they have different things. They're pretty neck and neck, though. Yeah, and Fred, unfortunately, going the wrong direction here in level four uh, to find that item. So he's going to spend a lot more time in here than Thierwolf did. But at the same time, Thierwolf does not have a red ring. This dungeon is nasty. Uh, and he's going through here with the wood sword and two hearts trying to fight Landmola and Dark Nuts and every bad thing on the planet. And just keeps dying uh, repeatedly and is, is losing precious time and may actually have to make that reset. Yeah, and a wand compared to a red candle. I mean, if you look at the offense too, um, not just the defense, I would rather have the wand every day of the week over the red candle. So Fred has the resources, the three keys compared to two, the, the wand compared to the red candle, the red ring compared to green tunic. Uh, Fred has everything going for him that way. Thorough just has level nine knowledge and, you know, dig this for Triforce and that's about it. I mean, it's one of those, I mean, I know the red ring's deep in eight, but knowing how crappy this seed's been and that you haven't set foot in nine, is it worth the little bit of investment to go get that just to make sure that you don't take a bunch of unnecessary deaths? Well, and we're kind of prejudiced too, because when we went through level eight and we saw what Fred had to do to get it, it was terrible, right? We saw how big it was and that type of thing, but it was really maybe 10 rooms of walking and you know what rooms you don't have to, to clear. So it's one of those things that where it maybe looks worse than it actually is. And if it's going to help you, like you said, in your combat and your movement through the rest of it, it might be a time gain to go get it. Yeah, and Fred determined to check the northern part, part here. And unfortunately, again, not the correct location for the item. But uh, he will get the recorder out of here eventually. And that is, again, going to set him on the proper path to where he needs to be. Um, it's just going to be, man, where are those silver arrows? As we do see the Triforce here for Thierwolf, he's going to check... This last room, which should be the item room in this dungeon. Yeah. Like... yeah, and to answer that question for people who are, are just kind of joining us again, silvers are in five, six, or nine. That's where we've labeled it. I mean, the process eliminations, five, six, or nine right now. So we're 50% silvers are in nine. I mean, half a heart. Like, again, these rooms are nasty. It's six HP Stalfos that are shooting swords at you. Uh, the... <laughs> 
God. Yeah, and you look at that, like, how, who do you prioritize killing? It's that Stalfos every day of the week right now. One, <laughs> one, because it's got less HP, but two, it's the only thing throwing things at you. You want to get rid of that guy. Yeah, these... These dungeons have just been very unfriendly. Fred on the correct path now, going to pick up his Triforce, or not, sorry, not Triforce, but Recorder. Uh, and, and the major knowledge is five keys versus one. And it's the wrap! We don't need! Wrapped, okay, all right, and this is five, right? This is, should be level five, yes. So Silvers are either in level six, which is just on their vanilla start spot, that screen, or level nine, which we know is vanilla level seven. You need the recorder out of four to get into. So now, who can put this seed all together? That's going to be the, end, the 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 key thing here. Thorough, if I think, is going to make a play for nine right now. He's his last reset was forty four minutes, <clears throat> so he's thirty four minutes, and he has eleven minutes to finish this seed out. So he's going to have to do a full nine dig, including finding silvers, killing Ganon, and rescuing the girl in eleven minutes. If he can do that, he's your champion. And Fred going down here to grab his bow real quick. Um, and then we'll see what he does. I mean, he's got so many recorder spots to check. And he's got less time than Thierwolf. Uh, yeah, he by reset far. before Thierwolf did, for sure, yeah. Well, and he didn't reset again, so he's on his second day still. He's got, like, not a lot of time. Yeah, Thurwolf, I mean, that's that's the thing you want to look at. The reset was 44.53, so you had 45 minutes of that. That's 89. So 129.53 is what Thurwolf has to beat this by. And like Aitjen said, if he is walking to Zelda at 129.53, he has to reset. He cannot dot done in the IRC at 129.54. Otherwise, it's an invalid run, and he has to reset right there on the spot. So it's... It's crazy. I mean, he is under the gun. And if you have pressure in nine going up against a Fred, going against, you know, a Thurwolf or whatever, normally, you also have that time crunch of the 45 minutes on your own screen you're looking at. It's insane the pressure these guys are under right now. Yeah, the other item is the white sword, which I'm sure either of these guys would be happy to find. So Fred making a mad dash for what looks to be level two to get his last Triforce. Uh, meanwhile, checking all these dungeons along the or these uh, recorder spots along the way. And unfortunately, if he heads to uh, Death Mountain, he's going to be going the wrong direction. And at this point, Theorwolf has way more dungeon item knowledge than Fred does, too. Yeah, Fred's probably looking at another day. And, and if you're a Fred, if you're rooting for Fred right now, if you're a Fred fan... You're hoping that Thorwolf can't find this in time, of course, because Fred's probably not going to get this done. With the overworld that he has to still explore with all the spots, unless he starts in the southwest and goes northeast, um, it's going to take Fred a while to find this level 9 and then start digging, and he has less time to do it in because his reset timer is just a little bit before Thorwolf's. All right, so he's going to go north. He needs to head west after this. That's the that's the play that makes sense, and he doesn't. Oh, the desert's so close, though. I can't. I that's cannot true. fault him for this. The desert is so close to that. The desert has does have three locations. I always forget about that. Uh, but after that, the southwest also has three locations, right? Actually, four, because you've got the one in the dead woods, the one at the vanilla seven, the one on the screen that uh, you do the world wrap on, and then the grave. So there's four locations over there. Yeah, Jacob, we're making a good point that, you know, these are mixed, right? And so these spots right here could be a tornado or it could be a location. The lakes are always locations and mixed. If you blow the whistle to lake, it's always going to uncover something. It could be a robber. It could be um, a door repair or whatever. It could be something else, but it's always going to be something. Fred's finding something here. Unfortunately, it's a level that he doesn't really need right now. He needs to find level nine. He's still going to go in and try to get some item knowledge if it's quick. Nope, he's going to go ahead and go out and keep looking for nine. But Jay Cooper makes a great point here. You know the lakes are, are items or are, are places. You've got to prioritize the lakes. Uh, I do. I pers and again, we have confirmation bias. But either way, I don't agree with this play by Fred. He's got a reset super soon. And I know he's trying to find the silvers, but the location of level nine is paramount. Um, I think he knows at this point that you need to have the recorder or the raft, but knowing which one of those it is and knowing the location and not having to spend exploration time on day three is super important. 
yeah, he's he's praying this is a quick dig and it's a one or two minute thing. It'll be interesting to see if if he doesn't get anywhere after halfway through, if he goes ahead and continues exploration. He's looking at his clock and saying, OK, I'll give myself five minutes for this and five minutes for that, that type of thing. Um, I don't know what he's thinking. Nobody knows what he's thinking. This might be very, very quick, though, but I don't know if this is the item or not. To be fair, right? He has red ring and wand. He can face tank this dungeon and clear it super fast and know if he needs to do it or not. So there are two sides to the coin. Uh, he knows he's not going to be able to finish nine either way. So with this, he's able to at least quickly clear a dungeon and be able to find out what he needs to know. Yeah, now he's got the map for it so he can take notes on the map. And he's like, OK, you know, this is going to be a wand dungeon because I'm going to lose my sword going through. So just these little things that he's learning right now um, are going to help him in this next day, which we know he's going to have to use. If you're looking at the timer for Fred, he's at 40 minutes right now in his timer. He can't get to nine, find the silvers, find the girl and all that stuff in five minutes. He knows that. He is information digging and that's all right now. And so what he's doing is he's going to go ahead and clear this room, see if this is the item room. If it's not, then he's going to take that, do as much of this level as possible. And he is going to die on this hill that something in here is going to help him. Oh my goodness. Speaking of the devil... Thurwell finds the silvers. He's got six minutes and 30 seconds to find Ganon and finish with finding Zelda. So just as this should come down to, right? This is not a race against Fred right now. This is a race against time for Thurwolf. The compass! And the compass, so he's got the girl. Now he just needs to find him. I don't, we don't have, I have not heard him. I think we got sound on Fred's side. I have not heard where, where Ganon is. Um, he's up against time. He's not up against Fred right now. He is up against time. He doesn't know it. But us as fans of this and this flag set, this is the best way for this to go down. Up against the 45 mark, you have to do everything over again, Agent, if he can't do this in the 45. This is super awesome. Very hyped to watch right and now. And he's only got one key. And he's got no, like, the pain I feel right now for him is so immense. Yeah, again, you, you look at the 45, right? 44, 53 plus 45 is 89. So he's got to do this at 129, 53. That's his drop dead date. And he's literally going to drop dead at that time. And he's going to have to start all the way over. Oh, this is brutal. Fred finding the raft in five. That's, that's great info for him to have. He knows that now. He can check the two raft spots, even in the amount of time he's got three minutes left. Check those raft spots. See if that item is required. This that is would be one huge. Check off his list because this pushes him towards the lake Absolutely. that he needs to go to. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The question. Okay, so then again, so Fred, Deerwolf has all the knowledge. If he has to reset, he's done in less than twenty minutes. Yes, Fisk bit. He will literally drop dead on the spot. This is like Death Note, but not quite. <laughs> all right. He's going to whistle to eight. Brilliant. No, Fred, don't do it. <laughs> oh, oh, no, he's checking everything, buddy. Now he's going to start from the northeast and go west. Oh, my heart sank just a little bit. And you know what stings for Thurwolf on Thurwolf's side? He's a room from the princess and may have to start at the beginning. What's even more hard? Oh, he's going to check this last raft spot. So to eliminate the I harder like item to locate. Super heads up. I love this play because you can say, okay, that's just a Triforce. I don't need the raft. I know it now. When I reroute myself, I can just grab that Triforce and go. I love that play from Fred. That's two easy spots to check very fast. He's going to go ahead and reset right now. He's got his 30 minutes. Fred will be done in this next day. I guarantee that. So now it's he will have an advantage. Agent, for everything that Thorolf has done... Fred will have an advantage right now if Thurwolf cannot complete this. Yes and no, because Fred does not have the silver knowledge, and he hasn't checked level 6 or level 7. But that's 50% for him. Wouldn't you go? Absolutely. I'm just saying he doesn't have that knowledge. Um, and again, the question is, do you go to level 8? This 9 has not been nice either. <laughs> like, there's Patras everywhere, all around the girl. Um, he just got popped into the... I'm sorry, that was hysterical. Go ahead, I, I apologize. No, you're fine. It's just like... But even then, so he's got the, the compass, which is great. You know where Zelda is, but you're still trying to find a way to get to her. You're trying to figure out where Ganon is. Um, 
it, you know, if I'm me, I know a lot of people map 9, I don't. I want to forget everything about 9, because I'm going to be so flustered and ticked off that I couldn't find Ganon. This is why people quit this flag set. <laughs> this exact thing right here. Oh, I mean, man. Again, 129.53, guys. That's what you're looking for. Thorolf has two and a half minutes to find Ganon and get to the girl with no bombs and one key. You go for broke here, though. No doubt. Oh, my God. Yeah, absolutely. But how do you get to Princess Zelda? Like, you can't get to her from this side. Well, he knows that for next day, right? <laughs> uh, Bud Wimmer, because at 45 minutes, according to the rules of this flag set, one must reset. It is Groundhog's Day. Yeah, if you're popping on just now and you're kind of wondering what's oh going on. Oh my god, it's Ganon! Oh, he found him! He found him! But does he have a path to her after he kills him? Oh my gosh! Guys, there's less than two minutes left. The two-minute warning has been sounded for Thurwolf. No! He's got to get this kill. Oh, and he takes a death! You said it! He dropped dead! <laughs> I didn't mean that! Oh my gosh! I don't oh, know that he has Jesus enough time. Thurwolf, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh God. He can still do it. He can still do it. If that door to the left goes straight south after that, he can still do it. He's got a minute twenty. You can beat Ganon in forty seconds with the wood sword, I believe. He's got to fly, but he can still do it. Get there, dude! Come on. This is crazy. Divert your attention over to Fred's right side over now. Level what two. you're going to see is somebody... Every second that Thurwolf spins in here, if he does not do it, is a second that Fred has on Thurwolf getting back through this level... Or back through this seat. Fred Kananikian. Oh, Thurwolf taking another death. Oh, that's quickly. heartbreaking. He, just, he missed that, that stun over there. He picked the right side, but just missed the sword swing. And there's no way. He's got to reset now. Oh, that's heartbreaking. And here we go again on Thurwolf's side. It's day four, which is just like day three for Fred. He's got an extra day on him, but the, the second day was one minute long. So Fred has an advantage now. He's jumped at 126, so about three-minute head start on Thurwolf on this next day. Day three for Fred, day four for Thurwolf, which is pretty much similar days, like I said. Now it's who has routed this correctly, key-wise, bomb-wise, resource-wise. Thurwolf has all the info. Fred's guessing, but if we know anything about Fred, he's going to go to nine. Fred's fishing for the bomb, not getting it. Oh, that's heartbreaking, too. I will say, Agen, very few could have done what Thurwolf did in two days there to figure this seat out, combat and all, without getting an eight, without getting the wand or the red ring, Able to maneuver this to be at Ganon with knowledge of where she was in two days is very commendable on Thurwolf's side. Yeah, and I mean, interesting point of note, either Thurwolf or Fred finished first every single time in this in this battle royale. Um, no one, I mean, it was one of those two in first place every time. Yeah, they're good at what they do. <laughs> they're very good at what they do. Yeah, White Sword could be in 6 or 9. It's the other item. We just, we're not sure if it's in 6 or 9. And Fred dies with the bomb on the screen. Oh my god, this seed, man. I mean, uh, I If I'm him, I almost feel like I should just reset because I'm so ticked about how this started. Well, and you see Thurwolf routing in bombs. He, he picked up a medium, medium secret. Now he's picked up a bomb pack. He's going to pick up another one. He's got eight, eight bombs. He he knows because of his work and his day three and how he started it. Remember how day two didn't go so well, so he restarted like right away? Mm -hmm. That info right there told him exactly how to start days three and four. And so Thurwolf has a resource advantage over Fred because he figured out how to start this seed faster. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I still think Thurwolf has a pretty sizable lead. Uh, he has all the nine information and Outside of getting to the wood sword, there's no difference here. He's going to be able to clear two, whereas Fred's going to have to go back. And Fred's still fi uh, fishing for a bomb. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, Fred got the jump start on it. Thurwolf knows how to route it a little faster, so he's going to have that advantage there. Fred cannot buy a global drop, though, unfortunately. is still not able to get this bomb. 
we've all been there. Oh, heavens, yeah. That's just one of the beauties of Zelda is those globals. And there is a small degree of luck involved in the game, but you can most of the time take that luck out by routing different. And you saw Thurwolf completely eliminate that luck of the bomb drop. Fred's getting it here, but my gosh, Thurwolf's already up in level two. All right. He doesn't need the power brace going straight to the Triforce. Just the things you learn so fast in these seeds take it from an hour and a half to 45 minutes to now. I guarantee Thoreau finishes this in the next 30 minutes. I mean, just with the knowledge of everywhere you have to go and what's required and whatnot outside of just combat deaths, he's going to finish this fairly quickly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I honestly think that we're going to see Therol finish in under 20 minutes, uh, unless he takes a death somewhere. Uh, these dungeons are pretty brutal, but um, I, he's just, I, I've seen him play the, the Router's Relish. I've played against him so many times, and you can just see how all these little things that he's already built into the route, that it's going to make it, and we saw him have, what was it, five Triforces in 15 minutes last time? And now that he doesn't oh, yeah. have to dig anything, he's just, it's, it's going to be crazy. Well, plus his key usage will be more efficient, right? Now, there's going to be two aspects of that. He had to dig a couple dungeons that he's not going to have to, which you don't know how many keys he picked up digging and got positive that because he's going to be flying through rooms, he might be a little short on this time, or he might have extra because he's not having to dig some. So it's going to be it's going to be very interesting because he was so close on keys and nine to see that dynamic and see how those are routed differently this time. Um, but outside of just the key issue... I think Thurwolf is just hands down going to fly in this. Yeah, and Fred does pick up his Triforce in level one, uh, but we're seeing Thurwolf literally right behind him, but already having the Triforce out of level two. So, um, again, already a slight advantage for Thurwolf as far as uh, progression. And again, already knows where the Silver Czar knows where Zelda is. Uh, not if we can necessarily get to her, but uh, does know where Ganon is as well. So it should be pretty interesting. And you see smart play by Thurwolf there. I mean, he he had an open door to the south. He knows exactly where to go to get this Triforce, but he even marked key rooms down and has memory of where keys were dropping and different things like that. He didn't have to clear that room, but he knew there was a key there. So just, just those little minute things that you make details on it and make notes on makes the rest of your seed go that much easier when you keep those resources in mind. And I do not envy our tracker at this point who has had to reset these guys' panels so many times and at this point they're just going to start flying through getting items and triforces yeah thank you so much tails is tracking this and we really really appreciate it because this is not an easy one to track all right so again this is going to be like we talked about this is gonna be kind of routers relish now they know where to go um, Fred's going to play like he knows exactly where to go and end at nine and that type of thing. Thurwolf has everything he needs except for the direct path to Zelda after Ganon. That's the last thing he has to figure out. And he was pretty short on keys at that point, so it'll be interesting in nine. But until nine, you're just going to see Thurwolf completely dominate this. The other thing is Fred actually does not know the location of nine yet. Yeah, that's true. Fred was looking for it when we last left him. Um, he, is, he does not know that he has to get over to Vanilla 7. Now, he's knocked a lot of spots out, so it may you know, divert him to the southwest because, like you said, there's three or four recorder spots that way. So it might be the first place he starts checking. But, yeah, he does not know specifically where it is yet. Also, it's really important to note, uh, I should have said something uh, earlier on, but this is actually a really important race for Fred in terms of the Tournament of Champions. Uh, a win here guarantees him birth into that, whereas if he loses, I think he just barely doesn't make it, depending on how uh, Alosa performs in Lionel's quest later on next week. Uh, so Fred winning this is, is paramount for him, uh, making sure that he gets into that. Yeah, absolutely. They're both right on the cusp there. It's going to be uh, interesting to see how that shakes out in terms of that. These are This is a small tournament in a group of small tournaments that are part of a larger one called the Tournament of Champions. Um, this has been going on. There's 10 people that started this. The, the last place finisher each week um, just like every other one of these, you know, gets eliminated. Um, so these guys have been, you know, whittled down from 10 to 9 to 8 to 7. And so the consistency that's needed to get all the way through this to the final two is is very, very tough to have. Um, 
but yeah, these these two finish on top, like you said, every single week didn't surprise me that they were there. But in it seeds like this to where you have to route perfectly every time to beat everybody else, or at least, you know, the last place person. Um, it's just, it's very impressive for both of them. Yeah, and both of these guys were in Router's Relish, too, so don't forget that. Um, you know, it's it's really cool. Uh, there's It's kind of like there's been small groups of people that have formed doing different, certain things, like a lot of people that were in Router's Relish were in this, and enjoy. there are certain things that people enjoy doing, and so you get this group of people that do it a lot, and they get really good at it. So every single race is ridiculously competitive, uh, and the skill level just keeps going. The cap keeps going higher and higher and higher because people are playing these similar flags, and so they're getting better at them, and so it's really fun to watch and to play. Yeah, absolutely. And like we talked about the last day, when we talked about days and that type of thing, day three for Thurwolf, day four is starting off just the same. We're eight minutes in, Thurwolf has three Triforces already. So he's flying through this, and he's going to have plenty of time to finish this nine this time, fortunately for him. We did oh. see something curious, though. Fred did route in this level eight. I think he does want this red ring and the uh, the one. I think he thinks it's a powerful enough combination to go ahead and get it. If not both of them, at least he's going to grab this wand. Yeah, an unfortunate death there. It's still, I mean, super low HP on the blue wizard robes, but it's still an unfortunate death there uh, as he takes a bop. They're both making good use of that red candle there. Yeah, and if people are interested in the Router's Relish uh, format, um, I am hoping here, once the tournament dies down a little bit, to try to start doing a weekly deal outside of the Battle Royale, specifically for uh, Router's Relish, that has alternating flag sets each week. Uh, so if that's something you're interested in, to just, you know keep your ears out for that. Um, we'll hopefully be about a quarter or tenth as successful as the Battle Royale system you guys have come up with. It's been fantastic. Uh, again, thanks to Random Effect and uh, Redbird Grad here for coming up with that system, building all the rules and putting this all together for us so that we have stuff that we can do all year round outside of the major tournaments and stuff like that. So thank you very much. Oh, no worries. It's a lot of fun to us. And I mean, if we weren't passionate about it and loved the rando, just like everybody else, we wouldn't have done it. So um, I appreciate that. And it's just, it's been more than what we could have hoped for when we first started talking about it. We were first kicking around ideas and that type of thing. It was one thing. And then to see all this kind of come to fruition and, and to be calling a match in the finals that somebody you know needs this to get into the tournament of champions that type of thing to see it actually play out it's been everything that we wanted it to be so it's been so much fun to see uh, kind of our babies grow up here yeah so fred does get that red ring um i, I don't know how much of a factor that that's going to play in anymore but I, again, it was it was one of those questions that that I brought up earlier. Will Fred route this in? And I think seeing how crappy all these dungeons have been, not having been denied, uh, it's a big deal. And we did see Thierwolf struggle a little bit with Ganon. He is in that really frustrating room to deal with, especially with no ring. Um, you know, you're gonna take hits on the bottom row likely unless you can somehow get a stun lock right away. Uh, and you know, not having a ring and going in with low health. Uh, it's making that a difficult for him. And it, they're both very averse at fighting Ganon. But we'll see if somehow that comes back to fruition for Fred with all this time investment to get that. Yeah, I think what you saw there from Thurwolf from that Ganon fight was that he was just under the gun time-wise. I Panic. think if you give him 10 minutes to finish that fight, he nails him the first time. Thurwolf is very good at Ganon. Uh, but I think what was happening there is he was, just, he was looking at that clock and gripping the controller a little tighter than usual, and that's what got him, not anything else. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I know for for a fact that I would be uh, adrenaline pump and heart coming out of my chest because it's like I have to reset in two minutes. Uh, don't die again and don't die again. And I would <laughs> die again and, and then I would die again and again and about 68 times later uh, be resetting. But uh, does get the wand as well. So going for the, the full combo here. Yeah, I think he thinks, you know, looking at the items, the only thing you need out of everything in one through eight is the ladder in one and the recorder in four. So because you're not getting a lot of items in other dungeons, I think he said, okay, the dig here for these two items is worth it. For the defense and offensive upgrades, I'm gonna go ahead and put my time here because all the other levels are fast. My opponent probably didn't finish in the first, he couldn't have finished in the first two days because we're at 141. He's probably on day three. So I may have an advantage here if I go ahead and pick these up. Maybe what he was thinking here. Yeah, but I mean, like, you're 15 minutes in as Fred, and you've only gotten two Triforces at this point. Like, 
You still don't know where nine is. You still haven't done anything in nine or know the, know the location of the silvers. Uh, I'm sweating it at this point. I've been here. I was this way last week. I could not find the bow. Um, and I knew at once I had to reset day two and I didn't have that information that I was likely going to lose. Uh, and sure enough, the, the finishes came in pretty quick after that. And so I'm sure that's got to be buzzing in the back of Fred's mind as Deerwolf is just absolutely buzzing. He's got, what, 11 minutes in. He's got four Triforces. He's going for his fifth. He has all the knowledge. He just has to finish. Yeah, we talked about this at the beginning, too, of when people flip a switch of discovery into, OK, let's finish this. Thorough of Switch flipped a little faster than Fred's, and Fred still isn't all the way on because, like you said, he hasn't found nine, and he doesn't know where the silvers are. So there was a little bit of trepidation by Fred, and he's even in six, maybe even looking for this item because it's the last item we don't know about. So he maybe is saying, okay, I want a Triforce out of here that I know about. Maybe I'll dig the item, too, while I'm doing it um, just to get one more piece before I go into nine. Um He may just be on a beeline for the Triforce, too. I'm not sure exactly what he's thinking, but Thorough doesn't have to do any of that. He's just ready to go. Yeah, I mean, it is, it's crazy. And Thierwolf got a potion, mind you, so he's not going to die again. Oh, no, I think that was his first priority. As soon as he knew he was at six hearts and he routed those hearts in, his very next pickup was that potion because he's like, I'm not dying again in this time. Yeah, I think if he had known that the bow was only five hearts, he would have only gotten five hearts and a potion. Absolutely, absolutely, because Thierwolf is a minimalist. I mean, whatever is not needed to complete a seed, he will not pick it up. So Fred was just routing a quick Triforce, so not looking for the item there at all. Uh, gonna head, looks like, to level 5 to get this one, then likely level 3. Yeah, this looks like 3 here. 5 is in the desert after he gets the Flute. Oh, right, you're right. Yep, and, but 3 is a very quick Triforce. Map reading is difficult. <laughs> no worries. And we see the key count here, right? Fearwolf knows the number of keys that he needs. He's only got one. He knows there's a couple on the way in nine. He doesn't need to route those. Oh, and he gets the Tridongo! Butte. That's a butte. Done it a couple times myself. It's always fun when you get it. That was, that was a fantastic bomb. The man, the myth, the legend. Everything's clicking for Thorwolf right now. Like, holy cow. Yeah, and he's looking at his, his clock right now. He just went over 15 minutes on his clock, and he has six Triforces. Yeah, he is uh, He's flying. I mean, Fred's not too far behind. He's a couple Triforces behind, but he's still got to go to four. He's got to get that flute still. He probably uncover five, so he's probably doing those two last, doing the Northeast. So he's probably a good three or four minutes behind, which if you think about it, Fred had a three or four minute head start on Thurwolf because Thurwolf was still in nine when Fred reset. So, I mean, just the efficiency of Thurwolf right now, once he decided, okay, this is exactly what I need to do to finish this race, it was it was amazing to see. And, and very few can flip it on and, and route themselves like Thurwolf can. And this makes him so dangerous anytime he picks up the controller. Yeah, I mean, Thurwolf is going to sub 20 unless he dies to Ganon or, or, or Zelda is difficult to get to. Um, that's about the only two things that could really slow him down here. And again, you're talking about Fred. He still hasn't found nine. He doesn't know the location of the Silvers. He doesn't know where Ganon is. He doesn't know where Zelda is. Deerwolf has so much information. And Fred, you're talking about the, the lead that Fred had. And unfortunately, he just didn't get a bomb drop in two. And he spent a lot of time trying to get a bomb drop so that he could do anything in the seed. Whereas Deerwolf just said, oh, I'm going to go grab a secret and I'm going to go buy bombs because they're super cheap this seed. Yeah, he just, it, it just shows the routing prowess of Thurwolf. And again, both these guys were in the router's relish. They're no no joke to it. I mean, Fred invented this, invented, created the randomizer. I mean, he knows the ins and outs of Rando as well. So these both are, you know, at the top of the field right now. Um, but man, Thurwolf, once he flips that switch, dude, he's just he's really hard to beat. Yeah, and you know, I uh, it was... Was it after last tournament? I, I don't remember. Anyways, I think it was after last tournament. I came back. Uh, I wasn't able to participate in the brackets. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to start warming up again. And then there's this Deerwolf guy who just trashes everybody in every race. I'm like, who is this guy? Uh, and he is just, you know, he picked this up. It was like a year ago. It hasn't been super long for him. And he's just been crushing everything that he touches. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, some people just have a nose for Rando. and I mean, they don't make... Even like right there, like he could have gone north. He's like, oh, wait, hold on a second. 
this room had a key, and I know it's going to take me 15, 20 seconds, but I probably need a key or two in this. Just just those little things that that Thorwolf just knows and remembers and puts together in a seed. I mean, it's a skill. It's not something to where I can sit you down and I can teach you a few things, right? But it's an actual skill that people have that makes some people better at Rando than others, and Thorwolf absolutely has it. Still can sub 20. It's going to have to be quick, though. Luckily, he's not sitting there looking at his uh, his time at 45 minutes or 40 minutes going, oh my god, I've got to kill Ganon, oh my god. Yeah, and uh, as Zarnax just pointed out, uh, Theorwolf is also in the, the top four winner's bracket for the Zelda 2 randomizer uh, tournament, which Zelda 2 randomizer is uh, incredibly difficult. Uh, I'm yeah. terrible at it. <laughs> so, well, I'm terrible uh, at Z2 anyway, let alone the random right. part of it. <laughs> So, and, and you know, like we were talking about, making sure that we got that key because he needs it right here in order to get up towards Ganon. Um, so, yeah, well planning by him. So he's got the potion. He is on green tunic, so he's got to be careful here. Yeah, and I mean, the hard part is is getting him in a stun lock, but if you could get to the bottom, it's the ideal place to be. Um just because you can keep him in that pattern of going left and right on the bottom instead of popping to the upper portion. Uh, but we see, uh, see Thurwolf taking the middle strategy, which there are lots of ways that you can do this, but uh, he does start to get the stun lock. You don't want to miss this stun, though, because his last movement was up, so he's going to run into you if you missed that. So, like you said, you want to be at the bottom, and, and he was able to wiggle out of that stun, but I think Thurwolf's going to be able to get him here. Smartly uses his potion. Now he oh, knows got him. Where is, doesn't need the compass. It's it's just under between the E and the dash, that column just to the south. He has to be able to go south somehow. Maybe bomb out of his room, bomb out of this room. We've got to do something here. No! A little bit of drama left. Fred's got to find nine, but that's all he needs to do. And we know this nine's been pretty quick so far. Will it be trolley? Yes. This could be a staircase situation unless you've got a oh! long walk around. So the question <laughs> the question is, will it take 30 minutes or 25 minutes to find the way to Zelda? I mean, if I was in nine, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it was me or You and me both, man. You and me both. Oh, look at that! Are what? you kidding me? Here and your champion of the Puxo whatever Phil Seed is Thurwolf with an official SRL time of I don't know because I don't have it up. Holy crap, Agen. What a run by Thurwolf. What a match. What a tournament this was. Yeah, 149.38. So 20 minutes, 17 seconds on day four. Wow. Man, what a staircase. Like, come on. He's After like, <laughs> you go from, oh my god, this might take a while. Let me take this stair and see where it goes to, oh. <laughs> wow. Like, especially after all this seeds thrown at you, you're just like, are you kidding me? And then to get that staircase, that's got to feel good. Unreal. Let's get Thurlf in here. Let's recap with these guys. I know Fred and Thurlf will probably both join us in here. Let's just drag these guys in here and talk to them a little bit. Fred with a swag clip in the HUD. He's still looking for nine, I think. Oh, he's gonna grab a potion. All right. Man, what a race. Yeah, this is unreal, man. This has just been a... It was a fun tournament to be a part of. I was part of this a long time ago. You are part of this as, as late as last week was. Um, such a fun flag set. It's fun every year you watch them do it on the uh, the Groundhog's Day actual day. I mean, they do this every year. If you were just joining us, we talked about that a little bit. But to see this week after week and to see these guys kind of fine-tune their skills, he gets caught up in the tornado there, unfortunately. Um, God, to end it this way in a situation to where Thurl was right there with a minute or two to go and dies to Ganon, has to redo it, and then show his routing prowess by finishing off the way he did, that was just so much fun. Yeah, and I, and I don't know that, you know, great flag set is uh, is to be determined. Oh, um, I love it. come on now. It, it was fun. I was just, I, I just wish there were level headers. That's my big thing. 
Uh, Zarnax's favorite flag is to turn off level headers. Uh, which yeah, made, I need to talk to Zarnax about that. It, it made it a little bit frustrating in this flag set just because it was random dungeons. Uh, so it made it difficult to interpret sometimes. But, uh, you know, this one was an hour 50. Our longest was the infamous, I think it was week three, where we had three forfeits. <laughs> And it was like two and a half or two hours and 40 minutes for the winner. I know. I know. I, know. I was part of that. I mean, I could have gone through and we had a freebie because, you know, somebody forfeit in front of me. And I'm just like, I looked at it. I turned to my chat and I said, nope, <laughs> I'm not going to do it, man. Uh, I was actually just informed by Theerwolf that he was unable, uh, will unfortunately be unable to join us tonight. Oh, that's a bummer. I'm looking. Yeah, I was trying to chat with him as well. So, unfortunately, I know he's going to pass along his uh, GGs to Fred as well. So we'll do that for him on his behalf. Oh, uh, never mind. It's not that he can't join us. It's that he can't join us because he doesn't have the role. So just a moment. Uh, Agent, going to go do some magic here for a second. We'll get Thurwolf in here. He's a uh, fun to talk to after these two. I'm sure he's elated. I mean, he'd be a wonderful field here. Um, a lot of talented runners in this one, and Thurlof coming on top doesn't surprise anybody because of how good he is. But man, to be consistent, as consistent as he was with the field that he had in front of him was uh, very well done. So uh, GG's to our grand champion, Thurwolf here. So Fred is the curious sort. He's going to try to finish this out. Um, it doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, Fred's going to want to see exactly where things were and what happened and that type of thing. Um, so he is currently looking for level nine, and that's it. I mean, he needs silvers and nine, and that's it. He's got plenty of time before his reset. His reset point is 45. Let's see. Yeah, he's got plenty of time here. Um, 18 minutes or whatnot. He should have no problem finding nine with as little of the overworld as I'm sure he has left. Well, he is taking the Hillian World Tour, though. I mean, he's showing it off. I mean, he's got, you know, beachfront property here for sale. He could be a real estate agent right now. He's showing us everything this map has to offer. But speaking of everything we have to offer in Z1 Rando, Thurwolf, you are it, man. Hey, GG. what's up? Man, awesome run. Crazy seed. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't have to go into six or eight. I figured which two dungeons they were, and I'm like, no. No, not shapes. No, no, thank you. You want to know what was an eight? Oh, I'm guessing it probably. Let's see, wand and white sword, red, red ring. You know, yeah, all the you good had stuff. The, you had the combo right there. Wand and red ring were the two. So Fred decided to actually go ahead and route that in on day three here. Um, Fortunately, I think what worked for you is one, you had a little better knowledge of the levels early on. Fred did a lot of digging without the sword early on in his early game in day one um <clears throat> where you kind of prioritized or i don't know i'm not gonna speak for you but you kind of prioritized sorting you got that a little earlier so you're able to dig dungeons a little deeper and had a little more knowledge going into day two um but the thing was that him going through eight the way he did and he took a lot of time in that where you were able to get some of the smaller dungeons and luckily eight didn't have anything that was absolutely necessary really put you in command here yeah i I like to dip into dungeons, but with this flag set, set and not knowing what dungeon is what, unless you get like the Triforce, it's like, I don't even know what I'm looking for here. So I like to have a sword just to be able to hopefully get a Triforce and figure out what I'm dealing with. What were you thinking at the end of your day three when you're trying to chase down Ganon, knowing and having the compass in nine? Uh, well, I'm like, I don't know the path to Zelda either, but eh. It, I was very sad I didn't go swing by that one last take any to get a red potion, which I did in the last day. Like, when I was going to get bow and I checked all those recorder spots over there, I definitely should have popped in and gotten that potion. Yeah, I think because that room to the left of Ganon <clears throat> was a dead end to you, and it would have pushed you back to that staircase, I think you actually would have had it on day three if you were able to kill Ganon that, either, even the second time, maybe. Probably not the second time, but the first time for sure. Uh, just kind of a series of unfortunate events there. But man, you had the seed red cold. I mean, you had it down because you finished that in 20 minutes that day four. That was insane. Yeah, I have a pretty good memory, a short term memory anyway. So, I mean, other than tracking nine, I kind of remembered where everything was, aside from maybe some key drops in random places. Keys were a bit rough. 
did you learn things as the weeks went on here or are you kind of pretty much just typically good at this style of flag i mean if if anything that you learn you know, can you share some of that with us uh figuring out what <laughs> dungeon set you're dealing with is very important with random dungeons that kind of changes how you play like with shapes that means six and eight are probably a low priority i got lucky with seven that i just kind of stumbled into both the item and the triforce and i figured five was that recorder block when it just seemed like five after the two old men so i was like eh, we'll we'll commit to this and hope silvers were in nine which they were so i was pretty happy with that Yeah, you pretty much had silvers down i want to say i mean it was a pretty good percentage for you for them to be in nine with your knowledge right yeah, I was just missing the items in 6, 8, and 9, so it's like, you know, a decent chance. Yeah, 40%, and if they're not, I mean, you just have that knowledge for the next day anyway, so it makes yeah, a lot of sense I'll, for your position. I'll know where Zelda and Ganon are, hopefully, and it just makes sense to do that with the 45-minute time limit. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Agent, sorry. I was just I think one of the funniest moments is when you found the map to level 8, and you're just like, nope, and walked right on out. Yeah, <laughs> I got that map and I'm like, uh, I want to spend the rest of my 45 minutes here clearing Overworld and figuring out where everything is. N just know to this level. Yeah, we were we were hypothesizing uh, again a little bit early on. We weren't finding level 9 uh, and we had the power bracelet. And so we were figured it was Recorder or Raft. And fortunately, it was the Recorder. Uh, you did find the Raft later on, but it was just one of those things where it's like, man... Uh, it's, it's always really frustrating because you're getting towards the end and you have to make that decision of, well, do I dig a couple of more dungeons trying to see if I can find the silvers or do I try to figure out where level nine is? Um, and, you know, it's it's just everybody does it different. And that's what's so cool about this flag set in particular is everybody has a different play style and it works, too. I mean, between you and Fred, you had first place every single time. Uh, and so, you know, and you two play very differently, too. So it's really fun to watch. Yeah, I kind of was trying to find nine when I ended up key blocked out of five and I knew that key shop, the cheap one was over in the Deadwoods. I'm like, okay, I'll check all these recorder spots while I'm in the area and found nine. So I'm like, okay, forget the uh, Death Mountain. So I was pretty happy with that. Yeah, Death Mountain contained one possible bomb location that we didn't see because Fred ran out of bombs and the magical sword. <laughs> That's yeah. absolutely it. <laughs> I was not getting Max. That that just wasn't happening. So Fred's still on his search here for the silvers. He's currently at 34 minutes, so he's still got a, quite a bit of time. Yeah, he's in that southwest quadrant, which is very, very close, so I think he's going to find him pretty quickly. I'm not sure if he's heard Ganon yet, but he was up in that area as well. This is going to be where the silvers are, I believe. Um, so yeah, he's, he's very close. Yeah, this is, in fact, Silvers. So he should finish in a couple minutes if he up A's, and I think he's been all around that room and danced around it, so he should know. Problem right now is he hit a red bubble, so if he does not have a potion, he will not be able to kill Ganon. Um, we're going to find out right now if he... He does. carrying one or not. He went over to the Deadwoods to grab the one that the Deerwolf was talking about. Ah, there we go. And there are blue bubbles here. Well, Thurwolf, we gave you a lot of uh, commendations and that type of thing as you were playing, but now that you're here, um, you beat a heck of a field. You always beat a heck of a field. I mean, you play just superbly here. Um, we just wanted to say GG and very well fought all the way through this, not just this race, but we were both a part of this and um, had a lot of fun. But, man, you just came out on top again, so very well played, sir. Thank you, Redbird. Appreciate it. I, I, I don't screen scroll at the best, and I may uh, face tank too many times and uh, have some unfortunate deaths but I, I like to thank the other things i can do kind of make up for that a little bit we uh <laughs> we we first started this seed and we were with you guys on that roller coaster of man you know there was nothing going on for a while because just every single dungeon was just a tough enemy set you weren't finding a lot of items i think we had knowledge of one two and three and that was it for a long time as far as items and those types of things so it was just it was a very tough one we didn't know how long we we're going to be here but i mean and we even talked about you guys finishing it in the amount of days that you did, as few days as you did, with it being a tough combat seed. It was just um, really cool to watch and really cool to see you guys flip the switch of exploration to let's attack this thing. 
Fred now taking out Zelda because, of course, he's going to save Ganon because he is playing as the Gibdo here. Does have a pretty good stun lock. He's going to lose the stun lock. Probably, I think, exactly where Thorwolf did on the very last swing. Yeah. Is going to go ahead and bomb Zelda for the heck of it. And then we're going to try to find the girl. Or the pig. Yeah, unfortunately, had the potion there because even with the red ring, he took a very quick double hug and <laughs> almost took a death there. He's making a beeline, so he's seen the room. He knows exactly where to go. He's going to come out of here. He's going to finish up as well. What a fun race, eight gen. This has been amazing. Yeah, uh, long race, but uh, very good nonetheless. Um, again, you can just this flag set is. It, it looks so easy towards the end, but the early portion, it's so difficult because you're trying to piece together information. And it's just so cool to see how it's like we have absolutely nothing and we've done 45 minutes. And then we've got a little bit and then all of a sudden it's just like jet seed. Yeah, absolutely. Just that conversion of, like we said, exploration into attacking it is... It's fun to watch, especially the two different dynamics. You had Fred digging levels early. You had Thurwolf doing overworld early and seeing who prioritized what. And then going into your day four with Thurwolf, you're sitting there fighting Ganon. And when you died to Ganon, Fred had just reset for day three. Maybe a minute before that, he had reset for day three. So he actually had a time advantage in this final day over you. You had a knowledge advantage because he hadn't found level nine yet. Or no, he didn't know the silvers were in nine, but he actually started this final day, which we knew was going to be the final day for both of you, a, a, probably two or three minutes before you did. So he had that kind of jump head start. Unfortunately, he got um, a little bad bomb luck where you routed in bombs to buy. He was hoping for some globals and did not get them. Um, so that kind of set him back a little bit. But he started this final day before you did, which was kind of a really, really interesting dynamic and made the last day fun for us to watch. Nice. GG to Fred. I think routers kind of shows that these seeds, if you know everything, they, they just fly. They, they really do fly past. Yeah, we had talked about that too. You know, you say 45 minutes and everybody's like, oh my God, you know, randos usually take an hour or that type of thing. But if you know what's going on, people like yourself, I mean, you can do it in 20 minutes like you just showed. I mean, you just brilliantly destroyed a seed that looked very, very difficult when we started this thing. Yeah, and I was kind of bringing up the point, um, SBC Fred joined here, um, of how, you know, routers relish in this, and it, we just have, like, everybody has their different skill set, um, and it's kind of cool seeing different groups of people play specific flag sets. Like, a lot of people that were in routers were in this, and, you know, in the one-hit one, one hit KO and stuff, and they play these flags over and over and over again, even though they're different, they're very similar, and so the skill set just keeps getting better and better and better and better as it goes on. And we saw a lot of, I think, what you picked up in routers as you started moving along in this as well. And it's just really cool seeing how all of those skills are coming together in different flag sets between different people. We are joined by Fred. So, Fred, first of all, uh, GG, sir. Ah, thanks. GG. Evil. Yeah, to kind of uh, decompress here. What's going on in your mind? Ah, just simply wasn't able to route anywhere near as well as I did. Had a lot of deaths in the early going, which uh, you know, if I remember too that level 7 existed or the vanilla level 7 spot existed maybe this could have been a slightly different game there, but you know, got the recorder late on second loop and said, okay, let me hit as many recorder spots as I can before I reset and then, oh look, there's either 5 or 7. I'm not sure which one it was. Probably 7 is my guess, and I was, went looking through it, just said, okay, let me see if there's an item in here. Oh, it's the raft. Oh, shoot, which took away all the time I could have been spending running around hitting all the rest of the recorder spots to find level 9. So, you know, third lap there just involved me trying to find everywhere to go find where level 9 could be, and I just missed that spot to make it close. Yeah, it was, uh, we were looking at this, you know, as each day went on, there was different dynamics. Um, you just talked about you did a little bit of uh, dungeon diving without the sword and that type of thing in day one, where Thorwolf did a little more overworld exploration, so had that. Um, and then days two and three, it was more information gathering, as, as you know. Um, but day three for you was day four for Thorwolf. You had like a one-minute restart on one of them. Um, but the final day for you guys, <clears throat> you actually started a couple minutes faster. But man, those that bomb luck you had at the very beginning set you back a little bit. 
um, and then you kind of had to go back into levels that you had initially routed into. And I think just that setback plus the recorder lake being it for level seven, the level seven was maybe the difference there. Um, but otherwise, it's very, very, very close for both of you in the middle days and then the final day as well. Um, it was it was fun to watch on our end. It was very exciting and just like. Um, agent had alluded to the different dynamics of how you attack the seed made it a, a lot of fun for everybody to watch yeah well, we're gonna look forward to going back and seeing just how crazy this was hopefully i can learn some stuff for the future here